Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Beer Googles. Double E. Double O. Double G. With Chris Woodsy Peralta and Mark Poles from the home office in Gilbert, Arizona. Hey everybody, welcome to Beer Googles. Double E. Double O. Double G. I've got my friend Woodsy here. Chillo. And we have the friends, our guys, our buddies from Subfax Podcast. How are you guys doing over there? We're doing great. How about you? Awesome. We are awesome. Awesome. We've got Matt and Mooney. Well, welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Um, Thank you. Before we continue, uh, our good friend Chris and I lost someone uh, literally yesterday. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. So uh, what's interesting about it is the three of us had a trip in Rocky Point, Mexico, 1993, I believe it was. Is it Memorial President? President's Day weekend tradition. Thank you, sir, per tradition. Uh, so we thought we'd honor him because I've taken that trip multiple times. My friend yeah. Woodsy's taken that trip multiple times. But the three of us together have only taken it together at one time. So uh, it, I want to honor our friend. Yeah. And uh, it's it's... <laughs> It just makes me chuckle because every time someone goes, hey, what's your first memory of Rocky Point? It is literally this story. So rest in peace, brother. Um, this is for you. Rest in peace. R.I.P. That's Would you like do. to start, Christopher? Uh, what was sure. his name? What was his name? Well, no, well we're, we're going to keep it anonymous right oh, now. Yeah, sorry. It uh, just has fresh for us or do you, I mean, it's up to you. I, I, it's, I'll, I'm, let it, I'm I'll leave it up to Chris because Chris was a little closer with him. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Beer Google's brother. Yes. Uh, so I guess we'll just, I guess we'll just leave the name out. Um, so there's probably 40 or 50 of us sleeping on the beach in RVs and tents and, you know, face down in the sand because you had too many beers or tequila or both. And this guy, um, <laughs> he was, he was using a beer bottle to, as a hammer. Whoa. Wait for it. <laughs> to pound tent stakes into the ground, the sand, oh my God. and he was like, I guess I'm, t I was, t he was probably 19 because I was 21. I was hoping That's he's using the bottom of the bottle because if yes. you're using any other part, that could be dangerous. So he was using the bottom of the bottle, and he got one or two successful. And I'm, sh he wasn't, he wasn't sober. You know, let's be realistic. N nobody was right. So the on the third stake, give or take one. <laughs> Mark's already losing his shit. Give or take one. Right. I love, lady, give or take one. I yeah. love this. I just He's a great dude. So the on one of the, on one of the last stakes, the beer bottle smashes on the tent stake. No way. Come I mean, on. Glass just, breaking on a, a hard object? No what way. a shocker, right? And there was a lot of blood. I was surprised by the amount of blood as it went the the bottle sliced basically from the tip of his pinky all the way to his wrist, give or take. Oh. It was it was hashtag physics. Yeah, hello. Yeah. So and he was he was, a, he was a fit guy. He was like Army ROTC. Yeah. He was in the army for many years. Fit so fella. he was. Uh, so I was there, and they're like, um, "Yeah, he's gonna need stitches." Like, oh fuck! All right, well, I'm the least drunk so i'll take my little he's drunk. hey we're in mexico we can do what yeah, the fuck I we mean, want you start drinking I'll just, this you know, I'll just rub the sand in it and i'll wrap my shirt around it it'll be good Everybody well it mexico, wouldn't stop bleeding is a responsible one yeah and i was there with my buddy alex who was not in the fraternity but he was a great dude and everyone kind of adopted him and he was he's bilingual so i was like hey man do you want to come with us to the hospital so you can translate because my spanish is terrible so he's like <laughs> okay so we go to the mexican hospital which is kind of like an AM PM. It was this little tiny building with one room. You didn't know if you were at the bar or the hospital. It was fucking weird. So they, they stitch that he gets, I don't know how many stitches. I don't remember. And they get a big bandage on his hand and it correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, we get back to camp on the beach and there's this big white blot. It's like he was wearing a boxing glove. Almost. It was very strange. We, we greeted, we greeted them as they returned and, <laughs> and our, our buddies kind of holding the glove, like the glove hand that Woodsy refers to, to which Woodsy refers. And he's like, 
hey guys and i swear his eyeballs are floating just in his in his sockets totally gl- glossed over <laughs> yeah you stitch, stitch big big rally you and give him a beer uh, so I, I was when he's doing our show i just want that on record <laughs> Sure. They gave him something. Yeah, so I, I wasn't aware. Happen. I wasn't I was right outside the room where they did the stitches. So I wasn't aware of what painkiller anesthetic they gave him till we got to the beach. And and you know, Mark and a bunch of guys were like, dude, what what did they give you? And he's like, liquid cocaine. Whoa. <laughs> and put a little one. syringe and shot yeah, it in, the, in the, where the hand was. They shot it right in his hand. So he was he was lit. It was. Awesome. Show me some more it, tent pole, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It was rad. It was awesome. So, rest in peace, brother. Yeah. Rest in peace, so, Matt. Please uh, speak a little bit so we kind of understand who you are. Why, hello, I'm Matt, and I am the host of Subfacts. I work with my partner in crime, Mooney. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and like, and, and I'm Mooney, uh, go kid. professional on. You're all. Awesome. I know. I, I was a straight professional DJ. Now. That was like a click. You're like. Ding! Professional. Very and, impressive. And please, Mooney, tell us about Matt. Well, hello. Matt is uh, like a, a genius when it comes to like m- entertaining me because we put the podcast together. It's called Poking the Bear, folks. Yeah, it's exactly. And I can be poked. At, well, hey, God, wow, for the show. Hey, no. I can be poked very easily. So, so we actually we work together. And for however many years, it's like, I forget what we actually do, but my job is to go in and poke the bear. He's so the fire starter. Every He's Drew Barrymore. I'm, you're, <laughs> you're, you're essentially <laughs> Dwight and I'm Jim. Yes. And so every day I go in to poke the bear. And so we've actually been moved. We've been, <laughs> like, nobody wants Put to sit the bathroom. <laughs> uh, and so we decided, you know, hey, why don't we do a show? <laughs> are, you, are you in the sub basement with the bug spray? Yeah, yeah basically. We're the red stapler employees. I, yeah. I was yeah. told I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume between the hours of 9 and 11 because if, if Stacey can listen to her radio while she is copying, I should be able to listen to it while I'm collating. <laughs> yeah, everybody's. Nope. Getting, That's dangerously good. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. It's, it's crazy. It's really crazy. But everybody's going back to work, but us. They're not asking us to come back. <laughs> they did, and I, I was all about it. <laughs> Everyone else on my team's like, I guess we'll work from home. But they, nobody wants to sit next to us. That's pretty much what that's pretty much it. So I got a question for you guys, just sure. because it came up on our show, and this may be this may be too soon. Oh and boy, you can you can tell me if it's too soon. So for the past couple of weeks, I've been taking heat because we told a story on the air. Mooney and I are actually one of my favorite bands is called Kicks, and um, they were you know had a big national following in the '80s. But either way. We're going to see Kicks in a couple weeks, but I was telling the story about how the last time we were going to go see them, it was going to be in this small little club. Mooney and I were going. We were munching on some pizza prior to the show, and Mooney gets a phone call that um, one of his, you know, best friends passed away. And so he looks at me and he's like, you know, hey, you know, what should we do? And I, of course, I've got a slice of pizza in my mouth, but I'm like, dude, we got to go on. The show must go on. <laughs> you know, we need to go. And so. I talk him to get into the show, which we're like, you know, front row, everything's great. Before the band comes on, Mooney's like, I have to go. I can't, I can't just be here. And I got like 40 phone calls. Like this dude, he rolled on me and I'm like, dude, the show needs to go I on. played you poker with this guy every week. This guy wasn't like a friend that I kept in touch with. So he this guy is like a brothers in arms dude that like, I, I would like literally take bullets for but he would have wanted you to be at an awesome rock show really like, that's what I he assume. would have that's oh what really he would have said hey guy so so i have established on and i established on the show that oh, my right. brother was even in, on the show that we were on your brother and, me. and i was like dude if you donk off and we have concert tickets i'm still gonna go in your honor and yet they all think i'm a horrible person people have written in saying i'm downright evil for doing that but am i wrong is it me no I approve this message. Awesome. Oh, I knew Woodsy would have my back on this one. Dude, life's, life is very short, and you got to live it, man. And, and the concert's not going to stop for us, right? Exactly. Like, keep going on to the next city. Like, you can't see another concert? Can't see kicks the next time they come what, around? What if it is the last time they play? Like, what if some they, they get into a... Like, exactly. A, what a if, like, would it really something? matter if you missed them? No, I need to be at that last show. Like I would be so. I would oh, be you actually, know you need to be at the last show if you're done. You don't know how pissed I would be at the person who died 
if I miss the last show of some, they have no control. control over them dying. The person dying doesn't have control over them oh, dying. They just I die. Would be pissed. Isn't it inconvenient when your friend dies when there's like Iron Maiden tickets and shit? It is the worst. That's the worst, man. If anybody in my family dies on the day of a Maiden show, I'm still singing Run for the Run to the Hills. You damn right. Don't think I'm not. (laughs) You're really putting me out here, dead guy. I mean, I established like I established if like Mooney dumped off, you know. I would bring like his replacement to the his funeral. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if we're going to a concert that night, you know, it depends on when the funeral actually is. You better is the replacement named on. New Mooney? Yeah, <laughs> that, that exactly. Probably. Well, I do have a brother. He is, so, well, I mean, actually, he has a brother, and his name I he, it's also Mooney. So um, he's not as like he's not as charismatic. He, yeah, no, not as enigmatic. Not as like. No. No, pumped but, up and angry. So, so I've got Woodsy's approval. Mark, are you in the same boat? I would not stop living a minute of my life, but I would hope that that person would be watching me from wherever they are. And I try to live it in their honor for, uh, for during my grieving period. Boom. And Hey Mooney, if you die, that seems reasonable. No, exactly. Mark just brought up a great point. I I bring, I bring him along to the amusement park so he can sit next to me in the roller coasters. This weekend at Bernie's. What are we doing? But okay, but you guys are all like, hey, it seems reasonable. This is like half hour, an hour before we're going. I'm getting phone call after phone call. Mooney, you knew him best. This guy was your brother. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know what's going on? What about the future? Like, I'm like, I don't know. I'm not going to make this concert. I just thought of something. Would it be better? If, yes. Like, let's say you, Don Cox, right? And I go to the show. Why does it got to be me? Just because it's it, – because Mark brought up something that I didn't think It can't of. be another one of your friends. It's, it's got to be me. You're doing something in the honor of the person. So oh, what if it. I okay. went to the show? So it can't be me. Yes. So what if I went to the show and then went to an Asian massage parlor afterwards in your honor? Boom. That's, that's, that's a good – that's an okay, right? I ha- you know what? I can't Hell be like ending. I'm dead. ending to me. Hell yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Mooney, so Mooney, Mooney, you don't got to answer to me. You got to answer to the other friends that know me, and then they're the ones who are going to criticize. No, and they, they were like, hey, he would have wanted you to be at an Asian, Asian massage parlor. You really think all my friends would say that? Yeah, yes. they might. Yeah, no, you're yeah. right. Okay. If, you, if you've ever listened to Busted. our show, Mooney oh my is God. like Godzilla. Like He literally <laughs> – he's the Asian whisperer. And so, I don't know about Godzilla because Godzilla doesn't really like he no, burns you're, you're Asian people big, up. I love Asian no, people. But you're a big like dude. You're, you're a big dude. You tower over them. That's yeah. true. But I love Asian people. They're oh, my they're my homies. He is like the Asian whisperer, though. We've gone places and <laughs> the Asian people just know he's the guy to go to. They they love you. I'm a friendly. Yeah, it's it's not um Tubuku. <laughs> <laughs> no boom boom mooney. <laughs> it's Tubuku. But um, so yeah, so if I did that after the show, that'd be solid. Hey, well, I can't complain either way. I'm dead. Okay, see, there we go. I'm I'm vindicted. You got to answer show. to other people. You like you get an answer from Woodsy. I mean, he might. Well, next time I take heat on our show because of this, I'm calling them. Please, I would I would be honored if you did. The okay. moral barometer is on that on that scale are as equal as you. Well, as it is, I already need to do a metal show with Woodsy. Because yeah. Because when we talk, so we, when we talk about music, and when you guys were on our show, Mooney took a beating pretty bad, <laughs> just because of his lack of music prowess. And so, um, you know, but I, I've, I've established, and, and Woodsy and I have been friends over Twitter, you know, talking about some metal. So cheating on me, I get it. Yeah. So I need yeah, to do actually, a metal show. Kix was my first concert ever. Why? Why really? is it got to be cheating yeah. on you, Mooney? Why does everything have to happen to you, man? Why can't he be cheating with you? Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, because Mooney will yeah, you know, like I'm, so. I'm, Slipknot comes to town. Mooney will not go with me. That's the, isn't he that's, scared of them? Or? He is. He doesn't like. Do you know how woke? Is. Do you know how woke the lead singer is? Corey, He's like yeah. Corey, one yeah. of the most spiritual people. But, uh, Mooney's in the that most industry, woke person though. He, he yeah, like straight up Archie Bunker when it comes. To <laughs> I get it. That's my point. Though. I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to help you here, Mooney. Just like shift the perspective to like the the other side. Just look at it from the positive, man. It'll be good. Like, I'm like straight. It, like 1980 to 1995. That's my musical. May, may I, no, no, I'm just talking in general, just perspective. Like, let me ask you a question about this. Like, do you, it seems like it matters that we would go right away. But the three of us, Chris and Matt, would you guys care if Mooney didn't go? If Mooney didn't go to the concert? Like, it wouldn't bother me oh, that, he would, that he would, that he would, right. 
Right. Yeah. As long as like, like we wouldn't want, we wouldn't care that you do it, but it seems like you have an issue with us doing it. Is that yeah. correct? Or am I wrong? Please correct me if I'm no, 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 going back to the death. Yeah, it's your, it's your moral barometer when it comes to that. Like I, for me, I do think there is a little bit of a grieving period. Like, in other words, I do think that, Hey, maybe you should be with your friends and sharing some stories, having a beer, having a cocktail, as opposed to being selfless and enjoying a moment uh, just to self gratify when you just lost a person that was very close to you that, you know, you think about a lot. So, I mean, yeah, I do. I, I wouldn't necessarily stop being friends with that person. No way. I mean, it would, you know, it'd be a quick bother. And then like, Hey, you want to go for pizza? Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. Well, Steve Whiteman from kicks and I, we mourned, we mourned that night. You, you know what I'm saying? It would <laughs> overall wouldn't, it would bother me for a little bit, but I'm one of those people. Like I have a quick, like get over, like, may, may I share? Keep... no, no, you may not share. I may not share a moment. No. Cause I, I've got a personal story directly tied to this. Cause go my grandfather, my grandfather passed away on a Thursday or a Friday, and I I was a singer in a cover band, and I had to perform the next night. And I just like first thing I said was like, "This one's for you." Like that's all I could do, but I yeah continued on. I just it did was I, the next night. Yes, okay. Yeah, no but it it wouldn't have it would have been it would have done I would have done it the same night. I'm not gonna lie, I would have done it an hour later. It, yeah, because it, it was ha I would have gotten a text about it. Or you know whatever, maybe not then, maybe a phone call. You would have got a beeper message. A phone back then. Smoke signals. Pa you get pager, bro. <laughs> pager, yeah. pager, bro. Nine one one. Yeah, you just turn your turn your phone off and enjoy the show. Hey, if I'm the only one, I'll join club. But I'm not. I know I'm not the only one because no, no, uh, not at all. But, what yeah, what I'm taking, saying is, I've been taking heat. You're not. My question is, it just sounds slight judgy from the other side. Like, I, if you're mourning, if you want to mourn, that's totally your prerogative to like detach yourself and, and have your grieving period. But it sounds like you have an issue with us not mourning or feeling or seeming like we're being disrespectful. So, right. So no, 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 no. And that's an excellent point. You and I'm, an I'm just asking point. the question. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to poke. I'm seriously asking that question. Cause it, it seems like that's the energy. No, 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 no. Yeah, of course it is. But I mean, and I, that's why I'm glad you asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Of course I love it is. Yeah, Thank you. I love the honest. I just, Actually, I just no, 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 what I'm saying is, let me, let me defend, the premise of our show. Let me defend. Facts. Let me defend myself. Like everything in life is judging other people, right? Like you, you look at people and what they eat, and you go, "How can they eat that?" Or you look it's at delicious. how can they walk. Go ahead. It's delicious. That's how you eat it. Right, right but mushrooms. I think they're disgusting. I look you're at people fungus? like they're from space that eat. No, nah, fuck fungus, bro. Okay, so, can I give you an example? What it feels like? Exactly the point. Can I give you an example of how it feels? This is what it is. Okay, go ahead. Mooney, you come to me and go, man, my best you know, my best friend, my poker buddy passed away. I I can't make it tonight. I go, man, I'm really sorry. That really sucks. That's it. That's the end of the conversation. However, have a nice night. Right. Revert I, I hope you take care of yourself. Please, you know, please, you know, do what you need to do to feel better and heal and think about think of them or her or whoever. But if I came to you and go, hey, Mooney, you know, my best friend passed away like an hour ago. I got to catch this flight to Vegas. And I'm going to live this in his memory. I feel like be like, you're doing what? Like, it, I feel like that would be the response. Uh, no, I don't know. Like, I would have to know your friend. Like, in other words, I would like have to know your same, situation. Same caliber, same caliber as your friend. I'm just trying to say, like, is your the difference of up? how... Well, the thing is, like, it's America, bro. It's like everyone's allowed <laughs> to feel the way they feel about it. But, like, I love the conversation. We still share the opinion of it, but we're trying to remove the judgment, I think. Right, but you get judged. I mean, I, I would judge you for other things. You would judge me for other things. <laughs> People judge each other all the time. It's not like – and that's what friends are for, I'm right? Gonna, gonna you judge up. them, and then you're still your friends, right? Like, they're not yeah. – I'm going I'm to stick up for Mooney on this one. Um, and this is – and this this actually can tie into how we got the name Subfacts. But um, Mooney is one of those people who is, you know, I would want to say like an old soul. So like, for instance, like if I get a gift from somebody and, you know, the gift sucks and I go and sell it, right, and it, or get something that I really yeah. want with it, Mooney gets completely bent out of shape because it's that person gave you that gift. You need to hold on to it. But we've so, all done that. 
Well, he doesn't. That's that's what I'm saying. Not he, one he, time, Mooney. No, he he's mm-hmm. he's the, like as straight as an arrow as you're gonna get. So no, like I'm really sentimental about stuff. Like I'm I'm one of those people. I, and and like if, so, what the thing is is if we argue, like I can call his mom a whore, and then the next minute I'm like, is she? And I'm like, hey, you know, see your brother. Like, are we, you know, you yeah. want to go for beers? Like, it, my, you know, my uh, tenacity or my fervor or anger, whatever. I mean, whatever it is, it's not. It's a one moment thing. Like I wouldn't completely judge a person forever and say there's no way I could be with a person that goes to Vegas an hour after his friend dies. No way. I would be like he's like memento when it's holding a grudge. Like he doesn't. Like, I don't do it. Like I yeah, never hold doesn't. grudges. It's a complete quick judge and then hey, you know, if I want to join you in Vegas, cool. Let's go bet on seventeen. Like I'm, I'm all about it. But he I'm just wondering if if that if the judgment is expressed at that moment, because then it gets carried it really that per- right? Because then that person receives it, and then they might carry it with them. I'm just it's just one of those energy yeah, no, things. You know what? Good point. I'm good just good point. Good look, man, negative energy. I'm but not. Name, I'm, you know? I'm just looking at the big picture. So yeah, yeah, how'd you get the name? So so Mooney, I told you I established we work together, and one day he was just like yelling at this poor girl that we worked with. And I'm like, hey, dude, what's what's going on? And he's like, she does not want to admit that Sylvester Stallone's the greatest actor of all time. And I'm like, well, you know, that is kind of her opinion, you know. And and she, and he's like, he's like, no, but it's fact that you know Sylvester it's Stallone. Much fact. He's like, it's fact that Stallone is the greatest actor of all time. And I'm like, I know, but for the fact that she disagrees, that makes it a non-fact because of the fact that she disagrees. A lot of so facts. Like, but I'm like, it's something that we all should agree. So it's kind of like a sub fact. Yeah. Right? So, so we were like, oh, sub fact. So going forward, there's a lot of things that Mooney and I agree on. Like pizza is the greatest meal of all time. Absolutely. Everybody should agree, but there's going to be some a hole in the group that's like, I don't think I don't even like pizza. And you're like, well, you're stupid. Sub fact. Pizza is the best. Exactly. So, so that's how I came. So we created sub facts based on Mooney yelling at some poor girl. I get the feeling like I'm getting pigeonholed again. Like this is the second time we've been with these guys. And like, I love it. I need to beat up again. Like I need other people on my side. You like, can like, you can pigeonhole pigeonhole me, dude, because pizza's probably like number nine in my favorite. Not oh, even oh. Not, not, not even top ten, bro. So and, and I gotta be honest, like yelling at a woman at work is probably like my kindergarten version of like yanking on pigtails because I like her. <laughs> she did, in, fairness, in fairness, she was a very attractive Asian woman, mm. and I, you know, I don't think he could express his his. You know, yeah, like, I, yeah, I can't he, express my love. He couldn't way. express his love for her, so he can't send her flowers. So. So. You should have sent her a pizza. <laughs> We tried with the pizza once, and it cost us thirty dollars because you didn't know what to do. Oh, that was awful. Oh, that was just, awful. We, just remember, guys, the opposite of love is not hate; it is indifference. Because hate, Aww. you still care. You still oh, care. Mira. And, it to and it's and it feels, where was that? It feels where? almost just as good. It burns just as warm. <laughs> where was that when I was sharing my opinion about death? He was like, I get it. I feel a little bit judged here. And then now he's like, indifference is it's like a it's like a river with a I mean when, when unicorns and show, sprinkles. He's he's fucking bipolar, dude. Actually East Coast is Jimmy's. When you guys were like, on our show, I'm his like brother actually polar. his brother actually called me and he's like, Why is everybody picking on my brother? I'm like, dude, we're not, we're having fun. Yeah, at my expense. <laughs> and I I wasn't awesome. picking, I was just asking how you view the world. Like I totally I'm totally cool with your filter. It just seems like you apply your filter toward on others. Doesn't everybody that's how they should do it? And that yes. that's where that's where friction can happen. That's that's, that's why I can't well, be friends with people with shitty work ethics. And that's why he's on the show. His, his I totally agree. I totally get it. Amazing to me. Yeah, no, I, I'm I, saying I it's very it's apart. a very hard thing to do. I I suffer from I, I look I I uh, resemble that remark. You know what I mean? Like it's not because I I've gotten through it. I fight it every day. So I, yeah. I recognize it because I I do it myself. That's all. Yeah. What is this like Crohn's? Am I going to be on a commercial? <laughs> yeah, that's right. it's, it's the side stress. effect like, of Crohn's is extra Crohn's. What is he going to do? Like, show me like in a bar with somebody eating like mushrooms on a pizza and be like, oh, don't fuck say no. anything, don't say anything. That's, what does it make it then? It makes it like your 842nd favorite. That's gross, <laughs> you have dude. To eat it. Yeah, it's, like, you, it's you, ninth you, without mushrooms You pick off it. the fungus and you throw right. it at the wall. <laughs> Mooney's also the guy who's like, you know, he'll be in a bar and – There'll, there'll be, we had a trivia, we used to play trivia um, at, a, at a bar, 
and there would be like, name this rap song. And he'll literally find <laughs> the only person of color in the room yeah. and be like, pardon me, Holmes, but do you have to know the answer to that? <laughs> and then he walks to the fucking next table it's got like some elite white guy and he asks him for Grey Poupon how does that work that's exactly what that's exactly how it goes I I literally don't like there's no filter for me when it comes to that well that's what I'm saying I love it and then like once again we'll be at you know work or a place and we could be arguing you know music or something like that and then basketball come into play and then you immediately (laughs) go to some other (laughs) folks that we work with and you're like Tell me if I'm wrong. Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time, right? I can't argue yeah. that. No, we can't. Yeah. That is so, a fact. Yeah. So, yeah, Mooney has no filter, which is why he's so good on our like why we're, he's so good on our show. Like, I listen to like a lot of other shows, and I'm like, this show is really, really good, but they don't have a Mooney, and so you know they don't have a loose cannon. That's what they don't. I'm, have. I'm thankful for you. <laughs> Aww. Aww. See, I'm helping. I'm See, now, now I can feel the embrace again. Now there's a little bit more later on because your brother got <laughs> mad at me last time. Like we had the um, the yeah, because he'll listen to this and then he'll get like he'll get mad at you again. That'll yeah. write you an email. Oh, wait, can you guys clear this up? Like, and I just want to make sure it's true. Like, you're clearing a lot of things we're up. We're on man. Beard Googles because I'm you know knocked on. We're not smart enough for not conscious. Well, I'm not. We're smart. we're fucking around today, so it's Beard oh, Googles. Okay. Yeah, because we, we oh, if, you want to, if, you, if you have a serious topic, the gentleman of subfacts can certainly join Knox Conscious for a deep dive on. I don't know. We could your do conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories, whatever. Man, we could love that. We could do something off. We could. Well, let's do something. Let's talk Check about Mark. You're going to get a sure. strongly worded the email. Google's is this one. This one's like, hey, welcome, join us. We're cool. fucking around and enjoying a nice afternoon yeah. evening. Oh, uh, by the way, I found out something disappointing before I came here. Went into a comic book store, just walked around, killing time. Apparently, three of the four Ninja Turtles are dead. There's only one left. Whoa. Uh, what? That sucks. Which I like the Ninja Turtles. What are you doing which, in the comic book? Store? Which one's left? I was Splinter Man. Time. Raphael, the red with the red um, uh, bandana. Wow. I'm super yeah, depressed that now, really man. That really sucks. That's, I way like more the Ninja def- Turtles. that's way more depressing than if your friend dies and you go to a comic book. <laughs> <or not. laughs> I'm like, I can't, I can't go to the concert. I gotta go to Michelangelo's fucking funeral. <laughs> and I, I can trump that. Wow, go. That's like having Vanilla Ice do the soundtrack intro for your movie. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not not, not, a, not approved. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two, or yeah. was it? He, he, he was. Yeah, it was uh, Vanilla Ice. Ice. Ninja, Didn't he do one of the Ninja Myrtles? Yeah, the Ninja rap. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go Ninja, go Ninja, go Ninja. Oh, go Ninja <laughs> It was on the second one. I think it was, yeah. No, I, I saw him live. It was, it was awesome. He's yeah. a great construction worker. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a small club. The funny thing is somebody actually came to my car and they're like, hey, you want to buy tickets? And I'm like, dude, you're scalping tickets to Vanilla, to vanilla Ice? How bad is your career gone? $4. You know, but but he, the, the cool thing is his, half of the show was like his metal stuff that he's done. Metal, and then the other half. So he, the other half. Yeah, like, he did like a very heavy version of Ice Ice yeah, Baby and stuff. Like he like corn, metalized it. Yeah, he tried to sound like corn a bit. I was gonna say, did he sound like Limp Bizkit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great, no, great more, analogy. It was more corn, um, huh? But, but, but even he, worse so on the cob. He, so then he um, <laughs> he switched it up. He did the he did the hardcore version of Ice Ice Baby. Then. Switched it up into the last half of his show was like the hip hop rap stuff, but he brought everybody up on stage. It was fun. I was like, yeah, way to go. You know what? I'd probably still, I, I'd probably still I, see him. I, I only went because a buddy of mine was in a band that opened up for him. So and no one died. died. I wouldn't yeah. pay for it, but I'd go if someone invited me and said they'll take care of it for sure. Well, but I wouldn't the, pay for it. No. The cool thing is that band, they, there was like a couple different bands that opened up. And they played Ice Ice Baby before. Oh, That's no. Weird. They kind of ruined the thunder. I was like, so you hear it like five oh. times in the night so, so the trick I've fucking band. seen open. I've seen opening acts because I've been a couple opening acts mm-hmm. with cover band stuff. And if you ever played the, the, yes. the, like, the headliner act, if you played even a song that was even close to something they play. Well, this one gets You would one be gets like, wor- this one gets worse. Unplugged. This guy, the guy actually had to go to jail. Like the the lead singer, because they've done this, they did it a couple times where he had a friend that was a stripper, and so what would happen is they would do like one final song, and so they'd go, hold on, hold on, we got one more song to do, 
And so um, during the song, this girl who she was dressed up like a normal girl that would go to a concert or whatever. They played Cheats of Beauty. No, he brings her up on stage, and next thing you know, she starts stripping him. Whoa! Fully naked. So of course you're not like they broke laws, which is why. Yeah, of course. But it's worth going to jail. Because he did a naked ice ice baby. Because he even got well. He, he got, got naked, naked too. While she got naked, and Whoa. I'm like, how's Vanilla Ice gonna compare to that? I, he can get naked too, I guess. I don't know. No, he he didn't. But anyway, maybe the whole band gets naked. It was everyone great because gets naked. you didn't even remember like who's up, who's playing. Everybody that? Wang Chung tonight. I don't know. <laughs> so so they did it on purpose just to mess with them, and I thought it was great. I'm like, like you pay, you pay attention to the opening act at that point. Just like when we saw County Crows, they didn't see their main song, Awful. Uh, yeah. That was the one, one of the shows Mooney and I went to, County Crows, and Mr. Jones was not to be played. How do you not play Mr. Jones? Come on. Don't you think uh, they're sick of it? They yeah, are. You know but, what? Good point. Good but point. Don't, don't go to a Ray County LaMontagne concert good. ever. Don't Ray LaMontagne, Ray LaMontagne only plays the album of the tour he's on. He does not play a single previous song from anything See, he just plays like through that. it he he's dry as a bone on stage i love the music but he's just so he has zero personality and it, I, I it's unfortunate it like but he's an artist he's one of those uh, but that's probably what makes him awesome you know it's like that good with the bad kind of thing. matthew yes don't you think iron maiden is tired of playing fucking run to the hills they are but they need they need to play it for people like me. I am I am I am a diehard Maiden fan. I've seen them twenty six times. I have a half Whoa. sleep. I, I for real. And I I did the math. I've seen them twelve times in the past five years, and I have a half sleeve of the Trooper on my arm, awesome. and I am sick and fucking tired of Run to the Hills. But here's the thing, though. So I I've, I've got bands that I've seen like thirty times plus, right? And like you know, I don't need to hear their hits because I've already been there. And I, for me, it's when they play the off song. Like I agree. You know, I know there's a, there's a difference in the set list, right? But I also have to look at it like it's my 30th time, but it's somebody else's very first, first time. time. Yeah. And so if they don't hear, you know, whatever song it is, then you, you kind of, I would feel shorted. And so I kind of look at it from both sides, but there are, there are bands, you know, like I've, I've seen so many times and I don't need to hear their hits, but you know, I still love it. Love it anyway. That's a yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, if it's the first time what? for someone, they're going to want to hear the uh, the good stuff. One band that comes to mind for me though is like Blues Traveler. So I loved mm-hmm. Blues Traveler and John Popper because I thought he sang well, I and I thought alive. I thought the way he played. Yeah, and I saw him at like Horde Fest, and I saw him before. But like he doesn't, he plays the hit, like he will play like Hook and the other one, like Run Around mm-hmm. and stuff. But he plays a lot of obscure ones, and unless you're a fan, you really don't mm-hmm. know it. But yeah. I appreciate it because I am such a fan. But if I wasn't, I'd probably be like, hey, be more mainstreamy. Just I did I, see the yeah. Travelers in concert. Oh, they, they're they're really awesome. Good. They're really good. It was them and Lenny, Lenny Kravitz in the same show. Oh, that would have been awesome. better. I didn't see Lenny with them. Yeah, no, it's great. Do you guys so, like Rush? Love them. Actually, there's a, we've argued this on the show. Um, I love them. My Actually, my nephew's name is Rush after the band. Oh, that's so and cool. Yet, and yet, um, well, yeah, your brother's a huge. My Rush brother's fan. a huge Rush fan. Um, Mooney, on the other hand, has gone to see them live in fairness, but can't stand them. Nah, I don't okay. like Rush at all. Yeah, no, I don't it, understand. I like maybe one album. song. Yeah, maybe. his Getty's voice is the voice. Is, the voice is a problem. I They're, totally, I admit that, and I've seen them probably I don't know eight or ten times. But the last time they released an album, Clockwork Angels, in 2012, mm-hmm. which. I didn't know the songs, but now when I go back and listen to the album, it's really fucking good. But I went with a friend of mine. He's like, dude, when are they going to play Red Barchetta? When are they going to play 2112? What's all this new shit? I'm like, dude, yeah. it's musically, it's very good. Just because you haven't heard it and you want to hear fucking Tom Sawyer for the 9,000th time, <laughs> be, you're a 50 year old little boy. Be patient, dude. They'll get to 2112. I promise you. The other side of that, though, is you too. Yeah. What about me they too? Com- they come out of Joshua Tree and Rattle and Hum. Oh yeah. And then they go into Octung Baby and they start that like they signed some really long contracts, like seven or eight albums. So they had they had to make stuff. So I mm-hmm. think they just got experimental. So they got into like electronic and all that Octung Baby, Zuropa, all that yeah. shit that they produced for all that time, and they can't recapture 
in uh they can't capture uh Sunday Bloody Sunday. You you just can't. It's yeah. so raw, yeah. it's so yeah. real. Oh, I love that. Like song. and then it almost became bougie. Yeah, and it became like elite, but like he definitely helped people. Like Bono's always been a humanitarian and all that. But like he wasn't having an issue with like making ends meet or anything, like feeling that conflict like he did when probably they started right where the music the actually sign. came you know from where it came i think that's the sign of like the the really like the huge bands like you guys can goof on me all you want but like my all-time favorite band is bon Jovi, and it's just from being a young kid and all that kind of stuff um but john's very obvious he's honest as far as saying like hey look I, there's so many songs i want to play live but i know i can't like I have to go in and play Wanted Dead or Alive every time, Living on a Prayer every time. So when you go see them, you're going to get all the hits you know, th that you want because they put out an album that was called This Left Feels Right. And they took like their hits and reworked them. And to the, to the fact that the songs don't even sound like the songs we all know and love, they played that, uh, they played it one time and got booed off the stage. Holy you know? shit. And it's basically, you can't, and he, he basically established, he's like, I am never, ever going to not give people what they want at this point because of the fact that people don't want to hear the avant-garde stuff. Well, Billy Joel is, I mean, every concert he does, he plays all the big stuff. I mean, but he's got a lot of Except hits. Billy Joel, that pissed me off. So I go see Billy Joel, and I, I love Billy Joel, but like, he's, he's got some garbage songs. And no, he doesn't. My problem with him is he's only got X amount of time he's going to be on stage singing songs. He doesn't have any garbage songs. He does. Oh, hold that on. Before, before we continue, gentlemen, hold on. Ding, ding on the bell mm -hmm. here. Uh, hold, hold on. <laughs> Don't say in relation to John Bo Bon Jovi, the songs we all know and love. I, that Don't do that. Because that's not a true I statement. know him and love him. I, no, I'm totally okay with him. You but I'm going to I'm gonna like tell you, I grew up right. I grew up in Philly. Mm -hmm. Right, right where Bon Jovi was all like, wah, 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 wah when he started. Yeah, me too. That's why we. That's why Don't we say all know and love. We didn't all know and love Bon Jovi. I ah! did. That's my point. <laughs> that's my point. We didn't <laughs> all know and love. Don't say it's we all know and love. No, that's whatever. not the point. No, but you know, I'm just saying it's a subjective, in subjective opinion. Could you have gotten away from hearing anything off the slippery and wet? No, not at all. But I also couldn't get away from uh, License to Ill either. And that stupid Def Leppard album. Actually, whoa, License whoa, to Ill was actually whoa, bigger. Whoa, than, yeah. License to Ill was bigger, actually. Than Def Leppard? I think with us, Bill, BC Boys ruled No, they did. My License, area. To Ill was, License to Ill was huge. Yeah, License to Ill. And it, it might have been an East Coast thing because they no, always talk about white no. castles that were closed everywhere else. But mm. <laughs> there's, one in, there's one across the bridge in Jersey that I used to drive to all the time. It's a church's white castle. Yeah, like I'm with I'm with Mark on the fact that like license to ill you couldn't get away from in our area. You know, Not, yeah, my, like, my high school it was like the biggest album it was. Yeah, but fight, I fight I, I, right. I love the fact that he basically said Jovi is doesn't everyone does uh, Okay, I'm sorry. 150 million albums later, still selling out stadiums for a reason. John Bon Jovi is a very he's a very popular singer. He's he's a product. He's a good product. He but really is. is. But it's, doing what, you know, they're doing what U2 does. They, they go yeah. out and they play their hits, which spells yeah. stadiums. If they were doing just whatever B-side song they wanted to do, they wouldn't be filling out filling stadiums that they do now. What do you think about Motley Crue retiring and then unretiring? I'm pissed. I, so I've seen Motley Crue a ton of times. Why are you pissed? Because they shouldn't come back. Like, if you saw the final tour, Vince is I want to see him. I've never no. seen him. Vince's voice has always been somewhat suspect, but it was awful on that garbage, last total garbage. And and so never insult anyone who was in the Adventures of Fort Fairlane. Shut your <laughs> fucking mouth. His name, his name was Blackie. Shut your movie. fucking mouth, Vince Black. You shut your mouth, yeah. my friend. But see, I was right. I got some part of it right. Vince. Black. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was Black Bobby Black. Something. No, Bobby Black. Hey, yeah. Bobby Black. What's the name of the song he did for that soundtrack? She dance. And yes. She trans, that's a good song, dude. Like a no, that's a terrible game. impression. That's a good song. Can't come to, um, that's I, that's, that's, that's the, I met Vince Neil. No, that's Encino Man. Yeah, Vince Neil. Called, that's yeah. a terrible movie. Brendan Fraser. Sucks. I talked to Vince He's Neil good as phone. a caveman. What? He's good as what? He's good Hold as on. a caveman. No, no, no. He, no, no. he had one good movie, School Ties. That was it. 
Whoa, whoa. Uh, Bedazzled was very... Well, <laughs> he was because bedazzled? I think we played good. We played so pretty, we good. Play pretty good. I want to play so good. I'm going to give 110%. And cause... we played pretty good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we'll be good. He hey, where, where's movies. my ding dong? Uh, what what yeah. happened, man? Yes. Let me Airheads ask is great. I love Airheads. Airheads is good. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, talked to, I talked to Vince Neil on the phone. He, uh, he called me. <laughs> my brother, what? My Why? Brother, my brother befriended my brother um ran a really nice like bar with a nice hotel within south beach miami and vince was there all the time so he, they befriended each other and so one night i was um i used to work at a tv station i was working you know 11 o'clock at night i get this phone call and my brother's like hey i got somebody that wants to talk to you and so he put vince neal on the phone that is and awesome I instantly turned into a 14 year old girl. I'm like, I love everything you do. And I, the funny thing is, I said, I even own your solo albums that no one bought. Ah, you know, that's ah, what I said. <laughs> and I didn't think it at the time. time. I didn't wow. think about it at the time, but you know, he was, he was all cool, and you know, he was drunk, and he was like, oh, thanks, you know. In the immortal words of Jeffrey Tambor and Arrested Development, no touching. <laughs> <laughs> But um, oh, but man. no, I love I love Motley Crue and I, I love the music See, and all of that. Come back. But they should not come back. It's it's poor Mick Mars is practically dead, and they keep practically pushing not guy dead on yet. Stage, and he is the unsung hero of the band. And he can, by the way, he can but, die the day before, and they'd still go on the. You know, You're damn right they would. Forward. Okay, first of all, can you really be in a band called Motley Crue if you have a fake hip? I know, right? It sounds pretty Motley to me, though. And like uh, Tommy clearly doesn't want to like, be there. He's you've seen Motley anything. Pirates. Why they're Motley. Like, they got head there. legs and parrots, and they're missing teeth and shit. Exactly. <laughs> they're Motley. Why doesn't so, Tommy want to be there? So Tommy's one of those dudes who, and he. I just read an article saying like he he hasn't wanted to be there for years. He's not doing he's, anything. He left the band a few times already, and it's he thinks he's a real artist. But it's like, no, you're Motley Crue. Just be in Motley Crue. That's all you need. That's to do. exactly right. He's not. I don't know him as anything else. But that goes back to the original point. Tommy Lee doesn't want to play, you know, Home Sweet Home. He doesn't want to do all that over and over and over. He huh. wants to play new methods of mayhem. Oh, I'm sorry, you have a million dollars because you sang an amazing song. Sing that song, donkey singer. I know. So that's. <laughs> that's that's the point. <laughs> if I may, I was at an Edward McCain concert of all things. Who's that? And wow. he talks about you. that song, I'll Be. Well, I'm, I I'm love a, that song. Look, my friend, I'm a singer. Patterson's ghostwriter name. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a singer, bro. That I like acoustic singer songwriters. It's my thing. I love that so, song. so he talks about before he goes, I never understood people who wouldn't sing the song. It's like looking at your lottery ticket that made you millions of dollars and staring at it and damning it every time you're looking at the lottery ticket. Yeah. And, so he had a really, he's like, look, this is what that's a good point. you, and then like guys like Gavin DeGraw, I like him as well. And he's always said, you make the songs you have, you do the songs you have to do so you can do the songs you want to do. Yeah. Like and and that's just favorite, how it works. One of my favorite bands is Blue October. And before they do hate me every time, Justin is basically like, Hey, this is the song that's putting my kids to college. And there you go. Absolutely. Yeah, so I watched Bob Saget before up. Bob Saget on stage and he's like, hey, guys, you guys all know me as Danny Tanner, but fuck you. I'm a millionaire because of it. And then he just <laughs> yeah. keeps on going like he does not care. Exactly. And, and I'm for it. No shame. Yeah, I would, I would do it. I would easily. Bob play. Sag- yeah, I've always wanted to be a one hit wonder, too. If you, like, how what? awesome would that be? No, it wouldn't be good at all. It'd be great. You can live off for the rest of your life. You can live off whatever money it is that you made on that one hit, and you're only expected to sing that one hit at like the local county fair or whatever. You don't have to do anything else. Like Debbie you know, Gibson, have like ten hits or fifteen. That's too much work later on in life. You get one good one, and you're lazy. That's what that's what I'm saying. Is I'll make enough money to live off the grid and and do it right. You gotta sing. Yeah, one hit song. Song. No. Yeah, We're back on the love line here uh, with Dr. Drew. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Our next caller coming in. Uh, All right, so I, I was going to have Meg. Meg <laughs> like I, it's like hitting one home run. Like, I hit one it's home run. It's too much, much pressure. It's too much pressure at that point. Once again, going back to Blue October, they're like, we don't want to be number one. We want to be number 14. Like, we want our album to come in at like number 14. Did Tom Brady stop one. winning Super Bowls? No. 
just saying there's a certain level of hey you fit in that sweet spot if you're great you continue to be great that's it you're great you gotta continue so you're saying blue october is not great i'm saying they're great for me but they're not great for the rest of the world like but they but justin will actually say i don't want to be number one because there's too much pressure from like the labels and all that kind of stuff if you're like sitting at number 14, you make enough money to like, you know, do what you love doing you know, and be off the radar. radar. Exactly. And and I think that's the better, it's the more sane way to go. Like it's a good in point. His case, he's got drug problems and bipolar and all that. So he doesn't need that pressure at number one, but I think it's a sweet spot for anybody to really be in. There's, there's a ton of people that never hit that number one, but you know, stay in that. Top I get it. It's like being a backup yeah. quarterback. You know, you can make $10 million not getting hit all game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like being next in line. You can let the person behind you go, but you'll always be next. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Dude, I love wow. when they do those random random questions when they ask people. Like, if you're in <laughs> if you're in third place and you overtake the person, in, uh, what is it, second place and you overtake? I forget it. It's like third and you're killing us. Yeah, you know, I'm killing it. No, it's funny. You're not, God, killing, damn you're, not telling, you're not telling our show, so it's I'm okay. Killing you're killing their show. Damn it. They should be pissed at you. All right. And this is why they gang up. Can you me. can you edit the last thirty seconds? Nope. <laughs> and no, like, we're good. No, we're good. Great we're advertisement good. for our show. Thanks. Great. Well, there you go. <laughs> These are the mistakes I make every now and then. Yeah. Shit happens. So you guys met at work. Do you, can you speak of your general field that you're in or, or anything? We are in the or? fintech industry, but that's as far as we can go. I, like I hear fit fintech? tech? Thin. thin like thin mints. Oh, we're definitely not fit tech. We're fat tech. If that no, was it's like thin mints, thing. like thin mint tech. Yes, I'm um, thin, yes. Girl the Scout financial, cookies. Financial industry, financial technology industry. Oh, fin. Oh, fin. Thin. Thin, like thin, thin on a like dolphin. Like the thin of a dolphin. <laughs> Like I a dolphin with a pH, like, but with an F. But tech? that's what's also on a shark. What's oh, that like, okay, Jenny I'm Craig? Off. I'm so lost, dude. So you guys, so you guys, like, you're, you are you? Uh, would you consider yourself pretty heady individuals? We are heavy individuals. Heavy, <laughs> heavy, <laughs> right? No, no, no. It's Generally, um, heavy, heavy, and heady don't necessarily go. You know, don't no, no, they could be uh, together. Let's just say we're in a we're in a support. We're, we're in that like client support nature. So okay, cool. We know enough to be dangerous. We don't make people a lot of money. So we help people that so make that's, a lot of that's money. A, that's another thing is Mooney is also very great at customer support. Um, there was one moment we were working together and he's talking to a customer and he said, he, I quote, you have a better chance of getting a text from God than getting those rates. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> really? Really? That's pretty how good. You do it? Customer support. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I do that all the time. Sometimes when you're straight, though, it almost kind of breaks down those barriers before. I mean, it really does. Yeah. Agreed. You know. Yeah. Just shake analogies, too. I love analogies. Love them. That's beautiful. I'll I'll try to get acronyms. Acronyms. Analogies. Acronyms. Hey, what's it called? You guys are really smart, dude. What's it called when you use, like, um, like, letters to remember something? Like, um, Mary's violet eyes made John stay up nights pondering. That's like the that way I remember the alphabet. About. No, that's the way I remember the alphabet. Oh. So, like, well, it's like know, I mean, NASA is the same thing. It's an ac- acronym, isn't it? Or no, but that seven astronauts. But we're, no, 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 no. So but NASA so, is an acronym. Right? When you re- when you use like if NASA was your own personal way of remembering something, what's that called? It's a good question. It's not. It's an not. Anagram? Is it called right. an anagram? Brian, I, I haven't had enough beers, and I haven't had enough Googles yet. Is it, is it, is it, wait, wait, wait. There's two. To, I know it, it's, it's up classes. here. I'm is not going to lie. It, it's up here. Is it onomatopoeia? I, just, or? I don't think it's onomatopoeia. An anagram, I think. Yeah, there it is. An anagram. an anagram is a word or phrase I think it's an anagram. rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase. Oh, no. But that's not what you're doing. That's not what you're doing. No, that's not what I'm doing. So You're using the first letter of each one. Yeah, so I, it's I, like word I association. What it's called. It really it's, is annoying me that I can't figure it out. Their show. Oh, I'm not kidding, but it's a fair question. It's a good, it's a good question. Answer. He's trying to get on not conscious. No, I'm so not funny. trying to get on there not conscious. I'm just trying to what? get an answer to a, a bugging question. That I can't Why, dude? You, dude, he's just fucking with you, and you're getting all worked up. That's what I do. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> That's exactly how we do. How's the high blood pressure? I, I know we're not streaming live, but do you guys want to give away uh, Mooney's address or your address so <laughs> the paramedics can get there in time or what? No, it's funny. I saved your life because of that. 
So you Mo- did save my life. Mooney, Mooney is also, as you can tell, a little high stress. And we were at work. What medicine are we on? What's it called? Oh, I'm not going to go into that. Medicine Tambien. Stuff, but- so we went some high blood so pressure. We, we were getting our. We're both. You know, uh, it's not Zantac, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> or Johnson yeah. and Johnson, or uh, whichever yeah. fucking thing they're we're, we're shoving both, down our gullets. <laughs> we're both heavy set folk, and so our work does the thing where they bring people in to do like your BMI and all that kind of stuff, and like and they I take come, your blood pressure. I come out with the numbers are shining and whatever. Mooney goes in, and the nurse goes. We're actually going to call an ambulance for you. Yeah. And he's like, no, I don't want to I'm go. like, there's no way. I got a golf trip this weekend. You're not calling an ambulance. And, and I'm like, sorry, uh, Mooney. Your blood type is pepperoni. Yeah. And <laughs> Mine's so, maple uh, syrup. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they were like, are you normally stressed out? I'm like, well, look at him. Look at him. He's, yes, he's stressed out. But um, yeah, they were going to call an ambulance on you. And it was pretty scary. I told him no. I said I wouldn't go. I said they can, you can call, but I'm not going. Wow. Yeah. So, um, like so why? Think, like, was it like heart or what? No, it's just high blood pressure. Okay. Yeah. And all my other stuff is pretty good. Like cholesterol is way good. Triglycerides way good. Like we should get everything pizza. else way good. Yeah. All other signs fine. Blood I invented pressure. quad glycerides. Just so you can <laughs> <see that. laughs> You're welcome, America. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So I, I introduced him to our, our – now we go to the same doctor now at this point. because And we have, like, other people. We have, like – we got, like, 15 customers for this doctor. Do you guys get a kickback? I no, wish. No, but what's great is – so the girl that Mooney was berating, this very attractive Asian woman, she ends up going to the same doctor. Oh, she good comes, story. <laughs> so, so we've been hyping this doctor up forever, and, and she goes to him, and she comes back, and she goes – do you guys have to get naked when you go visit the doctor? And we're like, no. no. <laughs> and so for some reason, she had to. And yeah. So I was like, way to go. That was, that was <laughs> wow. Way to go, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> go, doc. You know, he She's like, be... I'm here for a sprained ankle. Why am I naked? <laughs> he, should, he should have been tipping me. For like, right. Exactly. For, you know. Oh, there's some show where the guy, the doctor always made him. The person take off their pants regardless of what the ailment was. <laughs> it's like I got a sore throat, doc. Take off your pants. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, so yeah, she's. I don't think she's going back since. But, you know. No, she just made an appointment. Oh, good. No, she probably yeah, married with him. a lawyer to sue <laughs> that doctor. <laughs> that doctor. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, hey, this, I told you she's cool like that. This chick. Is I cool told like you. That. Well, yeah, okay, so Mooney... Why, why are you selling her to us? No, no, like, Mooney mentioned are you a pimp? On our show. I think you mentioned it on our show. Yeah. So we were talking, we, we have a two-year anniversary coming up. No, it's so after like, the show, because yeah, uh, otherwise okay. we get in real trouble. So so we have this two-year anniversary now coming we'll up, and we're, we're kind of prepping for it and thinking things we're going to do. And Mooney's like, we could have this girl come in and you know get naked. Because we talked about stuff. soap land. And, and I'm like, I wasn't talking she about works her with us. No, I she's a partner on our team. You can't just have somebody. I wasn't having her, her naked. It was just, you know, bathing suit. You can't do that from a work. Well, I already place. figured that out. We're done. With this idea over. I yeah. took the seminar and everything. I passed with <laughs> the I well, passed the was, fail test. <laughs> that was the funny thing is Brian, our producer, was like. Dude, you can't do. I literally just had to watch a three-hour video. <laughs> you can't do this stuff. He's like, I don't know why. She'll do it. <laughs> like, well, doesn't make it right. So look now, if she offered, you just accept, and you're okay. You still, yeah, but then you just you, can't offer. Can't you still get in trouble? Well, you say this. You go, no, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> And then you're, I think you're covered. Please as long as stop. it's recorded on some device, you're good. We, we have her actually. I don't know if you can hear our uh, my board, but we have a sound clip of her. She's a part of our show. Yes, she is. And hold on. Let me try it. I heard a woman say something. Oh. That's her. <laughs> oh, we didn't, we didn't hear that. Didn't, but I, heard, I thought hear I heard a woman earlier, like when oh, you no. guys were saying hello, like testing. No, I think that was my wife. Oh. She tried to. <laughs> Oh, nice. No, that was just my wife. Yeah. <laughs> now on to this hot Asian chick. Yeah. I mean, no, no. That was just my wife. Now now let's keep talking about this hot Asian chick. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like, married forever. <laughs> that's not a woman. That's my wife. That's like true love, gentlemen. True love. 
that's what happens when you've been married for 14 years. <laughs> so, so how did your gravities collide each other at work? Like, so to do so this it, two years, it, almost two years ago, when, when's the anniversary? When, um, like, when did you start? What, what date? Oh, okay. So we started, um, July, July, July 2019. No, it was July 5th, um, 2019. Cause it was Stallone's birthday. Yeah. So we did it on Stallone's birthday. I was okay. basically an afterthought. Like, yeah. so, so I'm like the fill in for the guy who was going to be the original so, mate. So what happened was we had at our work, um, the boss had this thing where we had to go and interview like everybody we worked with. So they, he didn't want anybody to be strangers in a big office building. And what so was it called? Meet three. It's called a meet three. Meet so we three. had to go and interview everybody. And everybody's lame question always turned into like, if you want a million dollars, what would you do? And so I got sick of answering that question. But my whole thing was, um, you know, if I had a million dollars, I would have a podcast and nobody would listen to it, but I would just be, you know, doing it. And so um, I finally thought about it. I'm like, you don't really need a million dollars to do this. And so I started, you know, researching and put together the stuff and then you need somebody to talk to. And so it was kind of like, Hey Mooney, what are you doing on Saturday? <laughs> you want to hang out? And so we didn't have anything planned or anything like that. And, you know, I'm so used to, you know, talking to Mooney on a regular basis. And yeah, it, was so, it worked out well. It just kind of, you know, fell into place. Like, I don't think he thought it was going to be a thing. It was more he was just coming over and then, you know, we kind of took it from there. And now I'm just singing Run to the Hills with you every week. Yeah! Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's learned so much about music in the past two years that, like, he's he's never wanted to because Mooney, Mooney excels when it comes to, like, sports and stuff like that. But unfortunately, we don't get any feedback from our audience about the sports stuff that we None. do. And but they all write in about the music stuff that we do. So poor Mooney's at a disadvantage on or this TV or movie. Like movies is third on the list. Yeah. And that's like sports and movies are like my thing. And they're like third and fourth in the hearts of our listeners. Yeah. It, well, mm-hmm. no, the problem is Mooney's favorite team of all time is the New York Jets. And Absolutely. It's hard to find people that like the Jets. It's, it's very hard. I'm going on a limb, bro. Uh, name it should not be in the Hall of Fame. Just FYI. Who? Oh, I agree. I don't okay, like cool. it. Cool. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, if you look at the numbers, his statistics are awful. Awful. He, name I it. argue with Jeff fans all the time. They hate Broadway. me. I mean, you have to admit, though, love and calling a shot. I mean, it's a historic thing. Yeah, he's still it's fucking not like the Hall of Fame. No, I'm saying if he he, he could have lost too. I mean, regardless, yeah. he just was a flashy guy. You know, he was cool. He's a he's great a character. flashy guy. Hey, oh, hey, hey, what's going you on? Don't understand hey, that motherfucker, get... that motherfucker said, hey, I'm going to win this game. And then he did it. That's exactly right. God, he said it when he was drunk at a freaking pool with all these hotties around him. Oh, we're going to win that game. I said, come on. I love this, how he wants to kiss people. Dude, this guy has probably, I know, actually he yes. does. He has 20 more interceptions than he does touchdowns. And yep. every Jets fan loves this dude. And I'm like, you're kidding. He does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. He's a junk quarterback. I said, I get the fact that he played in the 60s when it was a lot harder to play. Come on, dude. Okay, I screwed up. All right, I screwed up. I brought it up. I'm sorry. My Good job, dipshit. I don't like him. I, I don't like, like him at all. Are, do you, are you guys thinking about starting a second podcast just called, like, the Jets? Piss Mooney Off? That's awesome. We already oh. have that. That's, <laughs> piss Mooney <laughs> Off podcast, the PMO, PMOP. <laughs> There, there's this so Moody off things, podcast. There's so many things that I know. We're not picking Moody. It's because I think we like you, Mooney. That's why we're that's why we're picking. Oh, I get passionate about everything. So no, it's not just Hello. name it or whatever. It's everything. Oh yeah. Like, so no, I get passionate about behind scrapbooks. Fucking Q tips, motherfucker. These things <laughs> fucking get in my ear and then I fucking take them out and then I put them back in. Fuck. So, so we got cool, like we have cool bumpers by like But I get excited, lips. sorry. <laughs> we have cool bumpers by like different celebrities and whatnot. And, and we got one from um, Clinton Portis recently. And I'm like, Mooney, I'm all excited. I'm like, hey, Clinton Portis, whatever. And my man went off for like 15 minutes on how bad he hates Clinton Portis. I'm like, that's not going to go over too well if he listens to the show. I don't like Clinton Portis. But um, uh, we just heard. Yeah, but like, man, no, go, you can. No, I'm not going to. No, no, you really don't like him. We get it. No, no, no. It's it's just, he was just too showy. Like he had one, two good years, and then all he he re, you know tried to relive it every every time. But, but you sure. can imagine people like like Keyshawn Johnson. 
Oh, he's another one. Like he, he uh, by the way, Green Lantern showed his ass up, basically made him eat dirt and said, how do you like them apples? I was Ryan awesome. Reynolds? <laughs> I know, right? Who's Green Lantern? I'm like, who's Green Lantern? Wayne Perbet. I'm thinking, Ryan, Ryan Wayne Lantern. I want, what's he said? I'm going, Ryan Reynolds played football? No, Wayne Perbet. Oh, okay. That so, was his nickname? Yeah, after, because, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, da, da, da. Keyshawn Johnson was basically like, oh, Wayne Corbett's light burnt out a long time ago, right? And then, like, Jets Nation was like, F you, you know, and like, well, he's a Green Lantern. His light never burns out. And basically, oh. Wayne Corbett went off that game where he played Keyshawn Johnson. Wow. That's crazy because I know how to spell Corbett, but I didn't know that. <laughs> and Corbett's not like a straightforward guy. I think it's C H R E B T. East Coast, yeah, you learn, you learn how to spell everything messed up. What? Well, I mean, Long Island has like massive. We definitely know how to speak everything messed up. <laughs> like well, Chicktawaga. Well, in Philadelphia, we have the Schuylkill River. Yeah, yeah Schuylkill. Yes. S K U Y. It's Schuylkill. Schuy Silent Hill. H. Yeah. How's it? It might be S C H U Y. I can't spell. I think it's S. There, you can't spell it. It is. I think it's S C H K U E U Y. Who cares? It's It's Schuylkill. Yeah, we don't care. Wine and Cool's beer. It's but in it, the river. It's, it is. Know. It's S C H U Y K I O oh, S U Y L K I L L S C H U Y L K I L L School Cool Mooney. Yeah. What Mooney? What do you think about your quarterback now that you don't have one? Uh, we we got Zach Wilson coming. Are you kidding? Are sure you're going to get him for sure? Oh yeah, he's it. Yeah, he, I, mean, I really I really like the him. Solution to every fucking problem. In the no NFL. chance we're not getting him. Basically, you know, it was like. Even Steve Young came out about it and was like, hey, it's already a known. You know, they contacted him, his family. They're like, look, we're drafting you too. So That's awesome. Cool. I Because I, I like him. I think Tyson uh, Hill is the only BYU quarterback that had any kind of oomph in any league. Like, Steve yeah, Young? Throwers. Who? Steve Young, yeah. Steve Young? Steve Young? Would be the other Young? Steve Young? Steve Young? Well, McMahon, yeah, but Mc, would you credit his offense with that? Dude, he did the Super Bowl way. shuffle, man. So like, I don't yeah. know. Well, I, don't know. I don't want to because I'm not a Philly lover, but Buddy Ryan. It was a Buddy Ryan defense. That really took Buddy care of that. Oh, Buddy it really Ryan's did. Defense was a beast. I love Buddy Ryan. That, that scored Dude, so many. No, no, that was his son. No way. And I like Jim McMahon, McMahon too, but I mean, like, I'm okay. So I'm talking recently, though. In the last what McMahon's the last one thirty years ago. 35. No, Steve, Steve Young, so it would have been 20, 30, almost 30 years ago. 91, yeah. 95. 92, when he won oh, 95. So tw- 25 years ago. That's a long yeah. time, though, to have. That's I mean, they, there, were, there was a lot of hype about a lot of BYU quarterbacks coming out. But, but like, no school reproduces quarterbacks. Like, I mean, if you think about it, like. Purdue. Who? Drew Brees. Purdue's QBU, bro. Who? Drew Brees, uh, I think it was United. Who? What's the list of Q, uh, Purdue quarterback? Greasy, on the on the seventeen Bob, fifteen and oh, Bob Greasy, with Bob the Greasy on the with the Dolphins. Yeah, but like recent because well, there was Bre- a couple Alabama most, quarterbacks. Bre- I mean, the Brees time. is the most recent, right? So that's what I'm saying. In the last thirty years, there's hardly been any repeat quarterbacks. You have Michigan, you have Wisconsin, you have Miami of Ohio. Um, you have Cal. Oh, California has two. They have Gout Goff and um, what's his name? Jefferson. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. This is how they get me quiet when you talk about. Kyle oh, by the way, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers is killing it as Jeopardy host. I hope he gets the job full time. <laughs> I think Lavar Burton should get it. <laughs> Reading Rainbow, but I he's got to wear the he's got to wear the hair clip. Yeah, he's got eyes. He should. He should him. do dress up every week. No, I don't know. LeVar Burton's solid in anything he does. Uh, okay, I don't know Even who LeVar Burton is. You know who LeVar fucking Burton is. I don't know how you don't you know, know who Reading LeVar Rainbow, Burton is. LeVar Burton? Le- 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 LeForge and Star Trek? Star Trek, Star Trek bro. You never bro. No, I was, I was... Why would the fuck would I watch Reading Rainbow? Everybody had no choice but to watch Reading Rainbow back in the day. <laughs> I watched Mr. Wizard's World. Three, I mean, uh, uh, three, two, one, Contact. And by the way, I didn't watch fucking Reading Fucking rainbow! <laughs> Thank you for posing the bear. <laughs> Mr. Rod, Mr. Mr. Wizard would be a solid Jeopardy host as well. But did they talk about Roy G. Biv and like how it appears? Great! Oh, here's a rainbow. Great! I learned one thing: a rainbow. It reads it's rainbow. reading rainbow because they read stories every time. Yeah. Rainbow, it's oh. the reading part, not the rainbow part that matters. Ah, reading's overrated. 
<laughs> bro you have not ever seen like a star trek next generation episode no, he doesn't. No, I'm not. I've been a Star Wars fan. Never really but, liked the Star Trek. The school Trek. wasn't big for Mooney. The, what are you talking about? I, I don't know how you cool. avoid seeing one of those. You have like a little geek in you, don't you? No, I just want. I, I don't. I don't. I love I Mr. Wizard TV, World. I, but I don't. I never really. I've never been a big TV fan ever. It's a fair point. Uh, yeah, we, but what is Mr. I've never heard of this. Reading Rainbow. Reading. You'll, you'll see it later. So you but start. Like, <laughs> I know one for years. I mean, does that count? Yeah, yes. that's a great show. <laughs> but um, no, there's certain they're things, redoing it. There's certain ah, things, I... historical aspects that we've had to explain to Mooney over the years. But the funniest is every single Christmas, our boss, our former boss, had to literally oh. explain to him the meaning of Christmas. Uh, and, by the way, the history behind it. Okay, I just looked it up. The first episode was '83. I was 10 years old when you should have been watching Reading Rainbow. Why do I learn? Why I'm not watching it now. I knew how to read at 10 years old. I'm not watching it now. <laughs> I watched it when I was 10. No, no, no. No one watched Reading Rainbow at 10. That's a show you watched when you were seven. Did you have a younger brother <laughs> or sister? No, you don't watch Reading Rainbow when you have 10 years brother. old. No one. Your school. I watched Friday the Thirteenth Part Two when I was ten years old. Did you ever have the whose idea was this? You're you're sitting in class. The teacher brings in the big TV on a cart and says, "Hey, children, I'm not going to do anything for the next half hour. You're going to watch Reading Rainbow." Not at ten years old. Maybe when you're seven. What I mean, what grade are you at a ten? Bit Reading Rainbow wasn't for that one year. You're talking about it. It's gone on for years. I don't know. I mean, it, it may have been for the younger kids, but wow. I, I I think that's a seven-year-old, six-year-old thing. Uh, you I guys can back me up here. I treat reading Rainbow a little bit along the lines of Bob Ross. I watch it. I watch it any chance it's on. Really? Currently? No. No. I mean, what the fuck would I watch Good reading Bob. Rainbow every chance it's on? That's ridiculous. Exactly. Ah! But when I was a little kid, I was like, yes, don't have to answer. Yeah, questions. but I mean, ten, well, it says the show is designed to aid and encourage seven to ten year olds yes. to and read and write. Ten. I and was already ten. I was past the. I was past the age on the puzzle from four to eight ages eight, four to you, ten. You and I aren't that you far. You said off you were age, ten, and I saw Reading Rainbow in a, in a couple of different years. Well, I'm sorry. Maybe Philadelphia schools didn't quite have the same education as New York schools. I can't Can help. we go back to talking about death? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us more about like the music part, but not the horror movie stuff. That's not my thing. Okay, so <laughs> so that, that's the funny thing about Mooney though. Is, his favorite genre of movies is horror movies. He's seen every one of them, and yet he does not like anything aggressive in his music, which nope, makes no sense to me at all. Zero sense. Like no aggression music wise, but loves. So I love you like, aggression in movies. So you like Air Supply and Saw? Yes. Yes. That's, that's, that's exactly that's, right, dude. You better get check your meds, bro. That's fucked up. It's like Deadpool, like the, the opening scene of Deadpool, <laughs> yeah. right? Where it's all like tender yeah. and tender and loving, and, and then there's heads exploding. Beautiful. Yeah, but don't they go, like, in my opinion, they go, like, hand in hand. Like, when I go to, like, Marilyn Manson or something, like, I want to see, like, I want to hear, like, the exorcist music and, like, and stuff like that. The imagery is very graphic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what you would you would want to see it. For me, it goes hand in hand. I don't know why you don't I don't. Do... I don't want to see it, but that's what you expect when you see Slayer. I mean, that's, there. it's oh, fucking, it's called Raining Blood, for Christ's sake, you know? Awesome. Love it. War Ensemble is my favorite, though. I just can't, uh, I can't get behind it. Like, I don't, you know why? I've never been a loud music guy either. Like, but you are like loud. loud. I know, right? It That's really f- is strange. Dude, like, I thought I, thought I was a dichotomy. That's, Dear Jesus. No, Mooney and I are the loud ones who listen to tender music. No, I, it's what it, I don't, Whoa, what it, I don't like. Up. It. Kind of true, yeah. right? Yeah. But I never right. blast music ever, like in my car ever. Like I'm just. Oh, I blast like, it, but it's tender music though. It's like <laughs> soft, like it's, it's super gentle. loud with the acoustic guitar so loud. Gentle, yeah. That <laughs> guitar, that acoustic guitar solo in the middle. <laughs> I was mm. talking to the VP of a company that we work for, and she said, "Like the, Mooney and her sit on complete opposite ends of the building," and she was like. It's nothing like hearing Mooney's lunch order every single day. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she goes, like, no, extra anchovies! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Fucking guy, you all the bread that I want! That's exactly what it is. Like, <laughs> I'm sitting there talking to clients, and they're like, oh, hey, tell Mooney I said hi. I hear him <laughs> in the background. You need a noise-canceling headset, man. 
Yep. I don't. Does it catch? It's a Mooney canceling it headset. Zoom, like quick. It doesn't, it doesn't catch Mooney. I'm telling you. Because it's like it doesn't catch. It catches like hums of an aircraft, but like instant pops. Does it stop filter? That I'll quickly? have to get back to you on that, dude. Yeah, I feel it like does, Mooney's. It doesn't. We, it doesn't stop Mooney. So I feel like Mooney's uns. Mooney proof. You yeah. have like a certain decibel, like the like an octave. No, like that. when when we do our show, like literally, my son has to sleep on a completely different side of the house <laughs> because. How much do you pay Brian to produce it down so <laughs> that you guys like your levels match? He's paid oh, two. So no, actually, I do the levels on the board, and like. My my mic is much higher than his. It's just, you know, not even close. But um, right. but so two years ago. That's what makes him special. Did you guys start episode one together? Or did you guys start right away? Was it solo? Was it the other guy? And then you kicked that person in the curb? Or how no, that work? It was, it was literally, like I said, nobody else would show up. And it was it literally was a moon. Makes me feel great. No, no, you, I know. I would. It was always like, because you know, when you get to of a certain age, it's hard to get people scheduled or somebody to even commit to every single week, even once you start doing it. And so, um, you know, Mooney was like happy to show up, and um, we didn't take any time to like. If anybody's going to listen to us for the first time, I highly suggest not listening to our first episode, episode two, because because it was one of those. I think a lot of people probably practice before they do this thing. I literally just said, Hey, Mooney, come over. And I hit record and you know, it sounds terrible. It's, it's awful. So like, I don't think we hit our stride for a couple months. I think it took, but it took a little bit, but everybody seems to like our episode two because we didn't, it was kind of like it's episode two. We called it electric boogaloo for obvious reasons. And that makes any, if you use the word boogaloo when naming an episode, it immediately will be, like instant gold. But we resorted to like the, the crutch, which is like creating a list of anything. And so we decided to go, what's the worst place we've ever taken a number two? Oh, that, we talked about that, that last week. So yeah, so basically that was, that sort of became our highlight reel. I wonder what those guys think. Do you guys have problems going to the restroom in public or no? Absolutely not. See, I, I, I will. See, Matt won't. Matt won't. I will wait for two. I literally. Do in public. Yeah, because I'm more concerned about the qual, like the cleanliness. Yeah, no, who's like, been there? You think there's COVID? The yeah. You know, when you're dating somebody and you go good. to your first, like, you know, three day weekend getaway, four day weekend. I, I've gone five days without going. Number two. Shut up. Dead that's, serious. That's just I, because, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it. I I tend to like. Well, I'm, why are we talking? I don't want. I don't know talk why we're about, talking about. Let's talk about death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I bind up when I go on trips anyway. It's just a thing. Yeah. You're, you're what on them? You, you bind yeah. up. Like you yeah. just kind of like you, your body change. Your body does something because it knows it's in a different environment. That's what mine does. My body doesn't bind up at all. No, no. Maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll go to Mine's at like sheets and it's like, oh, there you I go. Think, New I toilet. Think we, I think we need to call the ambulance again. Is what I think <laughs> we need to do. No, it's so, it's, it's so annoying too. Mooney and I, because we're a little on the overweight side, we have to go to the same fat store. <laughs> that person DXL. Goes, so we'll go there because we'll be like, hey, let's just go. And as soon as we get there, he's like, I got to go to number two. And he just leaves me for like a half hour. Yeah. I'm like, really? Dude? And you got $200 later. Yeah. Spend- <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now we're joined at the hip. We shop together. We do this show. It's stuck on you. That's us. Yeah. Let me see kicks. As long as you don't say you poop together, then we're good. Oh, no. God. That's even not. That's that's awesome. horrible right there. That's God, bad. that visual is going to be stuck in my head. You're welcome. Oh. Okay, so, so back to death. No. So for the, kiddo, <laughs> for, the, for the kiddos who are still alive after watching this or listening to this, what <laughs> uh, of, ruining your show. <laughs> of your – it's okay. We get ruined all the time. It's cool. Oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. It's cool. <laughs> um, what's your favorite episode of the of the ones that you've done? Who's your favorite guest? Uh so we have a, um, I have two, I think um, one of one of which like we're gonna hopefully get for our second anniversary. But um, when I was in Philadelphia the last time, I befriended a guy who does um, the greatest Rocky impersonation ever. Yeah, he does. And he has like the number one tour in Philadelphia, and Stallone actually talked him into doing the job. Believe it or not. And so he's been on our show a couple times. His name is Mike Kunda, and he's got a um, documentary on Amazon called 
I think it's called the Pretender, which is really, really good. Yeah, Pretender. And so on our second anniversary, in our first anniversary show, um, he called in and he did a he did Rocky talking to Father Carmine, and they yep. basically blessed our show. It was awesome. And so, like, we're never going to get Stallone on the air, but, like, to have some, the closest thing you can get to Stallone saying our names, I thought it was just awesome. But then we did a, we did a show where it's called, the, I think it's actually called The Drinking Show. Yeah, The Drinking Show is great. Where um, every 15 minutes, Mooney and my brother and his wife had to take shots. Every for two and a half hours. For two and a half hours. And so it was kind of like herding cats at the end of the show. Yeah, that was a very, my, very hard show. My brother is from Miami and has all these celebrity stories and whatnot. So in that show, he's telling a lot of celebrity stories. But meanwhile, they're getting drunk the whole time. It was awesome. Awesome. My favorites are, are one of our Dream Warrior shows. Um, we talked to a dream expert. and Dr. Amy Lawson. Basically, she's like an expert at like, and breaking down dreams and explaining why you have them and you know why you may have had them so we each came to the table with like three or four like messed up dreams and she was like oh it's blah 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 and i'm like oh okay explains it yeah and those those shows are always they always do really really well because she's got a huge reddit following as well and so huge reddit following but and so the last you guys time, should have her she's great the last time we read, um, we had we reached out to Reddit, her Reddit team ahead of time and got a list of all the dreams that they had. And so we all analyzed the dreams on the show. It's pretty cool. That's very cool. That is cool. That would sound like a good get because, like, it sounds just interesting. Always yeah. analyzing dreams and stuff. Yeah, she's good people. and um, But she does make you realize, like, by the end of the shows, I think we're all sitting there going, I could totally do that. I could totally analyze somebody's dreams. I couldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel bad. Like, you know, you sort of like someone comes to you with like their deepest like dreams and you're like, well, that means you're basically going to, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I needed her last week because of my whole cheetah dream. God, you and the cheetah it comes back to the cheetah. See guys, Sorry about that. this is what happens when you are not good at segues. You always come back to the cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, those are I think those are our, our biggest shows. Do you guys want to analyze one of my dreams? Absolutely. Yes, yes. By yes. the way, Doctor Doctor Amy Lawson, uh, the last episode, she actually the first episode, she said that I could do her job, and she gave you credit the second episode. So now we're we're good at dream mail. We're, we're uh, sounds like with this hit thing. it, go Woodsy. Okay, here we go. So this is a month ago, whatever. Uh, I was on a very advanced aircraft. Um, but it looked kind of like a cross between the space shuttle and the Concorde. And I was like in the upper deck and like in the first class section, but it was like a lounge um, reminiscent of the Iron Man, the first Iron Man scene when Tony Stark was getting drunk with the other, the Colonel guy and there was two strippers kind of yeah. like, kind of like that, except the walls. Yeah, bridges, I think so. Uh, sir, it's flight attendant strippers, please. Fucking stewardesses, <laughs> whatever. Flying <laughs> <laughs> hula. <laughs> so the wall, however, the walls were covered in like shag carpet. They were like furry walls. Awesome. And then there was very few people in the compartment that actually were not employees. And all the employees were, they looked like they were all wearing white suits like they would work on the love boat kind of like that naval looking outfit yeah. and they were all they were Scientology, though. Scientology sure yeah yeah except they were all they all looked all the employees looked nordic like six foot one blonde blue eyes incredibly good shape like they were supermodels fucking like, valhalla bro valhalla oh. hell yeah uh so like, was, you like, know basically like the diehard terrorist yeah yeah but they were um, female right Oh, yes, sorry, it, was half, it was half female, half male. And oh. it turns you out, <laughs> it turns, well, yeah, it turns <laughs> out they, they were actually androids, all the employees. They were like bots. Fucking like Westworld? You're Westworld in this we, Except we were, yeah. we were. We were on the fringes of space. We were like in the stratosphere flying. Right. You were and on then, uh, Richard Branson's fucking yes, Virgin, Virgin like Atlantic, you know. motherfucker. Yeah. So <laughs> there was probably only about six Non employees in this big lounge cabin. Are you one so, of the non employees? Yes, I, I was a non, I was a guest on the aircraft, okay. and th we were having cocktails. And then I woke up. See, I think he doesn't trust people. 
that you got <sighs> all of that and you got he doesn't trust people yeah why why get, do you say that because i don't think you can get fully comfortable because the people you're surrounded by are robots so you can't get he can't get deep with these people because Whoa. they're basically just they're robotic figures they can't really he, well, wouldn't you be able to trust a robot? Because robots can be pro. No, but you, you can't get deep. You can't like you can't share feelings with these people because they're robots. Maybe he has so trouble with sharing feelings, hence the concert going after his friend dies. Wow. Ta da. I didn't take the sex spot to the concert, dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, but I think it's a, it shows a lack of trust in people. Because he's like, I can't get close to them because they're it's just a robot. But he wants so, to be comfortable well, in that ex, in that experience. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to jump on it a little bit. I'm going to piggyback a little bit. I don't think it's that you can't trust people. I think it's that maybe you don't allow yourself to get close to people. Trust issues. No, close. Like, trust is a different thing. But, like, close to, you know, your deepest, darkest secrets. Like, you know, what you truly feel as a person. That is a different type of trust. Like, can you trust the guy to be? Like, I can trust you to be at my house at 4 o'clock to pick me up anything i can trust you to remember anything that i want you to remember but can i trust you with a secret no because you'll tell everyone at work and go listen to the stuff that mooney told me yep so that's the thing there's different types of trust Mm. maybe he has a problem trusting people with like how he feels his seat like his comfort factor see i don't know so it's something like that but i don't get the fact that why it just ended it seems like a very they all sure. just end, though. I know, but it, like, how is the buildup? Like, how did he get there? How did he I, get yeah, the, I, I want to know that too. On? I want to know that shit too, man. <laughs> I don't like, know. Did you, were you about to get busy with one of the blondies, and then? No. no it it sucks when you're when you're just sleeping, and then and then you're, boom, you're in the middle of one. You're like, oh, oh that fuck, I'm really, awake. Dude, I curse. I curse the dream gods when that happens. I'm like, you. <laughs> you couldn't have given me two minutes. Yeah, that's all. Like two more that, minutes. That's a, that's the one thing that I t- I talked to Dr. Amy about it on mine, and I think a lot of mine she was like it's just sexual frustration because I have I always have this situation where I'm in like a plane or some tragic like where the plane's going down or like I'm in an elevator and, and then you wake up just and it's crashing and I'm sitting next to the sluttiest possible person I can think of in my head at this point nice. who's doing things that you wouldn't do to farm animals to everybody. Your else. wife. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, just is she check. Asian? She, she's a good yeah. egg, <laughs> you know. But um, but anyway, so I'm sitting next to the person, and so you always think like, okay, I'm gonna hook it because that's <laughs> my way of going out. So I talk to the person. I'm like, come on, just you know, let's let's. And she's like, oh no, not you. We're dying so, in a fire crash. Please let us start yeah. to yeah so start the I coitus. Finally, I finally get her. Like I have to negotiate. So I finally negotiate her for just to even like touch it or something like that, and then I wake up. I'm like, really? Like, just when she finally agrees to something, that, boom, that, see, I wake you, up. It's terrible. I know. I hate that, dude. I'm like Jamie Lee Curtis. Schwarzenegger has my arm. And then, like, he's pulling me up. And in this case, it's not like True Lies where I get saved. I get, like, dropped on the fiery bridge. I die. Awesome. Like, it's worse. Yeah, but no, Dr. Amy, um, she's had some crazy ones where she deals with a lot of, like, transsexual folks who yes. are, like, yeah. animal. Like, they're like a deer or something. And she'll tell you how, like, you know, it's it's a male and a female's body or whatever. Like it goes to a whole nother level than what we can bring to bring yeah. to the table. But wow, um, it, she knows what colors mean, and I'm like, okay. And she actually cares about the people that are writing their dreams in. Like we would pretty much be like, yeah, it looks like you're gay. Next, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, next dream. Oh <laughs> you my know, god, like, you dreamt you were a cheetah? I don't know, man. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> but no, she if actually. That, you know, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but if that were the case everyone is gay because everyone's had some thought or dream or something yeah no but her she she actually really does a uh, give her i want to give her credit she actually does a really solid job where she cares about the people she does care and she oh what a great thing a a medical professional mental health professional who wants to help people that's great yeah yeah very impressive i I know it's crazy world but no and we we, we're just like you know stupid when we do our dream analysis but like you said uh that just means you're gay sorry it means you're gonna die next week. Next. So yeah. I have trust issues, but I'm I not gay. I go to psychics so. to just say that shit. Yeah, that's you're gonna die next week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and so um, the other show, things that we do, like on our show, that people seem to like is the movie we, recasting. Yeah. Well, we do movie recastings, but we also critique movies that we've never seen. So, like, we'll watch a trailer of some, some movie, 
and tell people how awful it's going to be or how good it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, certain movies you know are going to be um, terrible before you Okay, so wait, wait. Okay, so do a movie review of Top Gun 2. See, me as being a fanboy, I am going to love it. Like I I like for me I think it's going to be awesome because I want to see like the gimped out Val Kilmer because I know he makes a little bit of a pre- um present he's in there. He's for a gimped bit. out? Oh yeah, I saw him live. I met him 2 years ago, I think it was. Yeah. So this is the best. So my wife, like, you know how everybody's got their, like, you have your top 10 list of people that you can sleep with. Um, Val Kilmer's on your list? No, my wife's list. She she was like her number one. And so I I got tickets because he was performing something close in our our area. And I didn't know quite what it was, but I knew Val Kilmer was there and I got meet and greet passes. So I figured, you know, it was like a present for her. And one of my friends looked at me and they're like, you do realize you know, you might have to like go along with this if he says, you know, hey, I want to bed your woman. You know, and I'd be like, look, it's it's part of the deal. You know, so we go there. Now, did you expect her to actually like express that he's <laughs> on her list? She told me he was on her list. No, I like, know that, I but tell him that. Oh, I don't know. Like, I was. Like, gonna, you, like, her, you think just out of the blue, he's gonna be like, hey, you neck? No, like, let's I was go. Gonna, I'm just I curious. Gonna, I don't I know. Just, I mean. I was going to let her like live up to her own devices. Right. So like, for instance, we were in Canada one time and this like really attractive waitress was like hanging out and she was like, she goes, you know what? I'm up for a threesome if you want, you know, she goes, but you have to like maneuver, pull it, pull it off. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, no chance. I got no game for that. So I would have left her to her own devices when it comes to Val Kilmer. But um, so anyway, we go there and he comes out and um, comes out on stage and he just starts speaking like he was like, like it was just weird. Like and he was drooling and everything. What? And he was there for a QA, which was funny because nobody wanted to ask any questions because the, they, they felt bad for him. And my wife was like, I think he's just putting on an act and he's going to come back out later and be normal. No, none of that happened. So I've seen him like, like blowed up and stuff. He had like throat cancer. Yeah, he got heavy. He had like throat cancer, but he didn't. He refused to tell anybody that he had it until like a month ago. He just came out like a month ago with it. But um, no, he he was trying to tell us that he he had like pneumonia or something like that. And it, like that's not pneumonia, dude. That's that's yeah. Up. And you're like, no, you're a liar. You have something worse. Oh, so cancer boy. So we took a picture. We took a picture with him, and that was it. But I looked at my wife. I'm like, hey, that sucks. One person off of your list, <laughs> you know. But um, he refused to sign. He refused to give us an autograph too. That's oh, so, so that. she hung out with him, and she got the ick. She got the ick. She saw him as like ick. Yeah, that's <laughs> you, basically what it was. Once you get was like, once you get the ick, you cannot go back. The like, ick is well, like, you can't. Uh, like Meg Ryan got the ick, and I no, never went back. I look like like George Clooney now compared to her oh, Val absolutely. Kilmer. Like she's literally like you're, you know, like Val Kilmer. You're it. You're yeah, my guy. I can stand the test of time. Oh, that was one thing we did on our show. Who else is on the list? Though I'm kind of curious now. On her list? Yeah. Well, I'm curious. Well, George. Who Clooney else can we shit on? Clooney, uh, <laughs> oh, but we Clooney's have... untouchable. I got a question for you guys because we he still looks good, by the way. I got a question for you guys because we talked point. about it on our show. Um, currently, at your status right now, like how you how you look and all that kind of stuff, right now, what celebrity do you think you could actually land, like right now? Because Mooney has one that I want to see if you guys agree with, but like who could you who do you think you you actually have a chance with and could land right now? Roseanne. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta shoot also. a little higher than that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I forgot who mine was. I, 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 yours yeah. is one that lasted forever on the show. Yeah, that's still a going yeah. argument. Come on, would do you got? I mean, there's got to be someone. Well, I'm a catch, dude. I mean, let's just be honest. <laughs> right. I, I, can, so like, like, I, can we, that, I can get that girl from girls. Are we talking yeah. Kate Beckinsale? Or are yes, we talking... definitely. Yeah. Okay, bam. Like Because I can cook instantly. You know, you're... yeah. Okay, there you go. He's getting Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> well, that's one of my tops. <laughs> Mark, do you have anybody? I, it, I couldn't land the Beckhams. I just can't. <laughs> Do you guys know yeah, the, the Beckhams? The, Beck- the Beckhams the have Beckham been on my story? list for a while, but uh, 
no, uh, I, we were doing the I, top, what we were doing the Ten Commandments podcast, and because uh, oh I don't I don't know why Mark wanted to talk about the Ten Commandments where I lost it on uh, so on honor the honor thy father and mother I kind of fucking lost my fucking mind but like number seven or eight is thou shall not commit adultery and I go mm-hmm. well if you have a threesome with the Beckhams are you committing adultery or are they and it okay. went down this whole it's pit. Pit of, pit of despair of the Beckhams and Mark's of Mark's uh, attraction to David and Posh Spice. I tend to have I tend to be attracted to like athletes, uh, wives or significant others. So the one that I would love to land, but probably have no shot because I'd get the shit kicked out of me. Hillary Duff. I think her husband's like a. You can get Hillary he's, Duff. He's a he's a <laughs> hockey player. He's a hockey. Oh, player. Oh, stop. Right? He, no, no but listen, I mean, he might have to fight the hockey players. Husband, I mean, take the shit Hillary out of me. No, no, take the Hillary Duff is a gorgeous individual, or like Tara Lipinski, something like that. Yeah, like, like like that. You're getting, uh, by the way, Lipinski, you, she'd be trading up to get you. I'd rather oh, get, look I'd rather, wow. Wow. look at Noni. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Really? I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather get Noni your number on the show. Is that, like, no, you mean, he's a good dude. He's going to get, he could get, he could get Hillary Duff. She's gorgeous. Even have a, forget that they actually have a, like a, a significant Look. other. Just if they're on the street and they're single and you're single, the celebrity that you think you can get, you want Mooney, do you want to tell yours? Because it's awesome. Oh, Rachel McAdams. I am so giving her off for me. Mooney is convinced he can get Rachel McAdams. Love her. And the sad thing is, after seeing that last movie <laughs> she did with Will Ferrell, I think you might be right. Yeah, I exactly. Why did she do that? Off. Eurovision? Oh, I forgot about that dumb movie. I haven't watched it. So, Mooney, what's reason. your Top Gun 2 review? I say it will, oh, God, it's going to depend. But I say it's going to be better than the first, only because Tom Cruise doesn't disappoint. What? Tom Cruise doesn't disappoint. And it's got Miles. No chance it's better than the first movie. It's got Miles Teller. Miles yeah. Teller is awesome. I love awesome. Miles Teller. You could get Miles Teller. And it's still got Tom Skerritt, doesn't it? Um, I, I believe so. so. Oh, is what? It? I thought he he did. You know, Tom Cruise is supposed to play the Tom Skerritt role. I know that. No, but I think Skerritt's one I think of those he does guys. A cameo, like, I think. Why did he bring you back? Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, but it's going to be awesome. But it's nowhere near going to be as good as the first. I think so. I think it'll be as good as the first. For anyone who actually saw the first one in the theater, the nostalgia the nostalgia effect will keep it always better. It's just going to be the case, yeah. regardless of the quality of the, the film. The first one's a great. I watched it two weeks ago and still love it. That's true. Yeah, be Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where'd who go? Exactly. By the way, we just recasted on our we did a recast of Revenge of the Nerds Revenge on our Revenge. show. Yeah, I saw that on your list uh, yeah. recently. It was we like two ago. Two Police episodes. Academy as well. Um, but um, yeah, our Revenge of the Nerds is actually kind of tough because we had to pick, we were trying to pick actors who are college age. And it's tough at this point because you, know, you did come up with the best for Ogre. My Ogre, yes. Um, Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski. Yes. Who would play Booger Presley? See, we we argued had a that. hard time. We argued because I thought very tough. I was gonna go with um, who's that guy that we hate his face? Um, <laughs> Tom Malone. Tom oh Malone. god. Oh, no, that was dumb because he looks like a booger. He, I went with um, the guy who did the uh, the King of Staten Island, whatever. Yeah, you did. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Pete Davidson. Yeah. Pete Davidson. Yeah. Oh, that guy. I couldn't yeah. argue with uh, He's not was, funny. He's not that funny. He's but not funny. funny. But like, I'm imagine sorry, he didn't I have to command the role, though, right? All he had to do was be. I mean, he had to be Booger Presley. No, well, I mean, keep in mind, I'm talking about his not comedy. He's not, it doesn't seem fun. Yes. He'd be Booger, Pete Davidson. Yeah, I could see it for sure. So Jimmy Fallon could still do good. Booger. I mean, he still looks pretty young. Yes, I was going to say, yeah, he could probably still do it. The hair off disheveled. But um, but no, we had we had some we had some good ones. I thought some of our, our audience members you know, poo pooed our our list. But um, Betty, eh, what can you do? I forget what we do for Betty, but any, you can get any hot blonde. That's pretty Betty. much what we came down with. Betty was replaceable. Um, I forgot we about were, Betty. So we were How arguing. Can you forget over, about Betty. I know we that's my pie. <laughs> we well, want to do it on the moon. Oh yeah, we did argue over the Lamar. Lamar. We argued over Lamar. That was the one that because uh, Brian and I both thought that um, Jaden Smith should be Lamar Luttrell. Right. 
And Awful. Rooney picked somebody else that nobody's ever heard of. I just don't want Will Smith's son being in another big movie. No, no, it's funny. He goes, I don't want the son of a big, huge actor to be in a movie. And yet he picked Kyle Schwarzenegger in a later on role for Stan. You wanted Kyle Schwarzenegger as Stan. And I'm like, Schwarzenegger, Smith, what's what's the difference here, bud? Um, but then he was trying to tell me that Will Smith is much bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. He pretty much is. No, he's not. He's Will not. Smith was not the governor, sir. Yeah, exactly. Wilson, no, they're both globally known. Like you could go to a hut in Tibet and they're gonna know both actors. Schwarzenegger is much better though. I, I like Schwarzenegger better, but I don't know if the public likes Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is better. when you're getting quiet when you're lying. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> what do you guys think? Will Smith or Arnold Schwarzenegger? Who's a bigger actor? Come on. Not bigger actor as in muscle. You mean like more famous? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, poop. Poop. I, I can't. remember Will Smith it's, it's is apples the same and, too. It Ugh. is apples and oranges a little bit because, like, if you take the early box office, that whole like the when you up it for interest and all that or inflation, it's not really a true number. Like, you'd have to see the number of actual tickets sold, not the dollars grossed and all mm-hmm. that shit. And I yeah, think that Arnold problem. Arnold was you know Mr. Olympia many times, you know in the heyday of bodybuilding against the Hulk. That's fucking phenomenal, you know? Yeah. In its own right. In a yeah. totally different way. Like, he was Conan the fucking Barbarian, right. man. Will Smith. Conan Will Smith the had, Barbarian. Solid. Will Smith had articulate moments. And, like, he he was a Summertime. very smooth rapper in his time Summertime, for his yeah. era. And yeah. Schwarzenegger was cho- like choppy, but he had this other side of him that was this alpha guy that was invincible, right? So they're they're very different. Yeah, in that way, one's a little more finesse, and one's a little more, you know, just like square peg in the round hole. I used to have a, I used to have a Twitter square contest peg. with myself where I would reach out to celebrities on Twitter and see who I who the who biggest celebrity get, right? I could get to either write like you know write back. And um, who was the, the, lo- like for the longest player? time? It was Scott Ian from Anthrax. Which you got a hockey player reach out? No, the the biggest one ever. I got the Trumpster. Oh, wow. that's right. Yeah, he he actually <laughs> wrote back. So, um, but it, it was Scott Ian for the longest time. Though, and we were arguing. Jeremy Roenick also wrote back at, at the same time as Scott Ian. So it was like, who's bigger? Is it Jeremy Roenick or Scott Ian? Jeremy Roenick. Jeremy Roenick. You think? And I'm a it's big Anthrax fan. So much the is thing is, Roenick, Anthrax Roenick's is good. global. Like the big yeah, global. but nobody, dude, nobody likes thrash metal but me, dude. In me, I'm with you. And, and, and Anthrax is my ninth favorite band, so I'm a huge Anthrax fan. It's like, so, okay. but I also know Jeremy Roenick is bigger than Scott Ian. Joey Belladonna or John Bush? Oh, don't be stupid, Joey Belladonna. Are you John stupid? Bush? John Bush? John Bush? John, John Bush era. John Bush belongs in Armored Saint and should stay there because he's great. Reign of Fire is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I agree, but I loved. I my favorite Anthrax is the John Bush era. The Stomp 442, they're great records, but Joey is Anthrax. Yeah, I, I never got into Joey. That was my problem with Anthrax. I love everybody else in Anthrax. Joey bothers me for some reason. Dude, his it's voice like, is uh, iconic. Uh, it's, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I just can't do Joey Belladonna bothers me. Ill, Ill regardless, gonna, Scott Ian is not as famous. I do. I love Scott Ian. I would say that that Roenick transcends his sport more than Ian transcends his genre because of his personality. I just think he's more really? personal. On, well, he's more on television, NBC. Yeah, so he's, he's way got more, more mainstream. Mainstream. Yeah, I think he's got more of a mainstream kind of the Strahan-y look. Without like, he's not straight. Okay. Strahan's like yeah. probably the most visible athlete just because he's on every fucking show. Yeah. And he's Possible. fixing his teeth too. I'm not a big fan of Strahan. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. I like him. I, I think he's a great oh. guy. I mean, it's like I'm it's he crazy how he I it's crazy how he got in to all these like morning shows. Like I'm like, he's, who the fuck was his agent or publicist? You know, he it is, it's every gig. Barber. It, Congratulations. It's, barber and it's absolutely insane how Strahan got in. I had no it's, idea. Tiki was on that trajectory. Tiki and fucked he up. up. He, and he completely messed up. So then they needed somebody else to fill in, and Strahan goes and takes that job. You can say fucked up. 
Tiki, what I'm did Tiki do? Tiki, sexual harassment like and everything. <laughs> yeah, what did Tiki, Tiki do? He had sexual harassment charges. Oh, and all so he also shit. he slept his wife. He had he um got another woman pregnant while his wife was Ooh, pregnant. Oh, it was like yeah. it was like the maid or something like that. That and then he, oh. fucked, he fucked like a coworker. The like, Schwarzenegger syndrome. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saturday. So Tiki, Tiki just, he had the world in his pocket, in his hands, and he just lost it. I got the whole yeah. world. And Michael Strahan was like, "Hey, hey. oh wow, well, I'm next." So, um, you know, I like Rondé better anyway. <laughs> yes, Rondé. Those barbers. <laughs> Those <laughs> barber twins are so entertaining. Isn't it ironic they're named Barber and they're both bald? I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> That's fucking well, weird. I never realized that till now. But what do you think about Michael Strahan fixing his teeth? How stupid is that? Did he fix his teeth? Why would you do that? That's your like. That's your in. That's your. That's what. That's, that's like your his, look. His claim Why are we him. talking about this? I don't know. Good point. Point. How did we get on Michael Strahan? I don't it's Mark's remember. fault. It's Chuck Mart's fault. Oh yeah, it's my fucking fault. <laughs> Now you brought up oh, you brought up you went from Rome. That's because you had your stupid Jeremy contest. That's contest with himself on Twitter. Your Roenick so, Scott Ian comment. So by the way, we had three hands all my fault. Yes. Speaking of, <laughs> that, speaking of that, our our work forced us to give up like one of our social media things to like promote the job. What? And I was like, I'm not giving up all these other good things. So I figured LinkedIn. Like I have nothing to do with LinkedIn. So I came up with a contest and I started linking in celebrities and so yeah so the funny thing is mooney is just livid going off on me because he's like you're lying and, and, and he's like he goes you don't really know damon wayans and like <laughs> while he's yelling at me damon wayans then likes me and su- suggests he like likes something he gave me attributes of something I'm like, see, Damon Wayans. You go way <laughs> yeah, back. Like, and he's sitting there going, "You don't know these people." He, like, he he like literally just reaches out to anybody and wishes like Madonna a happy birthday. It started, by the way, Woodsy will appreciate this. That's so it awesome. Started with Rudy Sarzo. Nice. So Rudy Sarzo was a, a LinkedIn friend of like can, one of my for, friends. For you fucking for you fucking non whatever you're listening to, can you tell us who this guy is, please? Yeah, fucking Rudy Sarzo. Can you please help Rudy us. Rudy Sarzo is awesome. He I don't. I just don't Rudy make Rudy assumptions. Awesome. I don't make Riot. assumptions. Yeah, he, he was in Quiet Riot okay, and White that's Snake. That's fucking amazing. I didn't know. Fifty percent of the crowd here out of four knows who he is. But anyway, so Rudy just passed oh, away. Oh, excuse me. Rudy, that I, 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 are, I have a Quiet Riot uh, 33 album at my parents' house still. It's mental <laughs> health, and it's fucking amazing. Hell I yeah. Look, he's more on it. It was really good. I didn't right. listen, was, I didn't care who the band members were. I got to admit, it was never Kevin like Kevin Mann. See? Yeah. Like, I don't even know who's like in Bob Dylan. Like, who's in Bob Dylan? Bob and, Dylan and the Dylan X. And uh, Bon Jovi. Yes, Don like Bovey. Van Halen. Like, yes. I, I don't know these things. Really? You don't know the people in them? No. Come on, man. Wow. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. give a shit. You know, you know what? I've always said people like it's sad that I can't remember things I'm supposed to remember. Like I can't remember work stuff at all. But if you ask me who played guitar for White Lion, I'm like Vito Brada. Instantly. Duh, he rocked, bro. That's Dude, amazing. Vito Brada, Vito Brada rocked. Okay, so congratulations. He's, he's so underrated that. Vito That's Brada. amazing. No, so I, I apologize. I just needed some tech, some context. I uh, so yeah, so it started yeah. with Rudy Sarzo, and I just went from like. I started poaching all of like his people, then poached more. So like my LinkedIn is stacked with like all these like weird B-level people that don't know. Him. But Mooney's like, you're gonna go for a job one day, and the job's gonna go. You know, how do you know these people? And I'll be like, dude, I'm people who know people. And he's like, you're lying. You're lying on your job interview. I'm not even going on a job interview, dude. But and then he ratted me out. He actually told our boss. He's like, that's cheating. He's got all these well, you had like 500 things and you knew nobody. Like, I've got actually thousands at this point. <laughs> what a fucking you narc. 500 on LinkedIn. That was the goal. <laughs> I know. Mooney narks me out to the boss. And the boss narc. goes, well, hey, it's good. If Damon Wayans ever wants credit card processing, he knows where to go. I'm like, see? When, uh... I got Morgan Fairchild on my LinkedIn. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was hot. <laughs> I can get her now. When, when did boards. Damon Wayans respond, or when did he like your thing? Because actually, I saw him oh, live was, like two months ago. Three no, it was a couple. Years. It was a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, he just, he's doing a stand-up tour right now, and it's like fifty percent capacity or something. And yeah, Megzi and I went. It was a great time. And by oh, the way, I I did want to clarify that about like Megzi is the person. 
that I would leave everyone for. She's on my list. Oh, Megzy, cool. o- only Megzy. Not is, Kate Beckinsale. Is, is not Kate. In the room? Not, is that why you can't? Not, talk? No, not she'll, she'll have, listen to this eventually. Not Hillary Duff. No, oh, okay. it's it's just it's just fun. It's just fun. She's good. Oh, She's good people. You, so you She's mentioned like, Megzy before. I know. So you don't go. The, you don't go through the list. Like you don't have with your significant. You don't say. Hey, come on! If there's ten people, if it happens, Megzy, you know who you should put on your list? Val Kilmer. I hear he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce you to his drooling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My name is Val Kilmer. <laughs> it was. It sounds so like awful. a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, she, she might like Muppets. She like, you know, so. Oh. It was like, was he Donald Duck? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it sounded like. You I can't speak I for Macy, before, but... but now I was like, oh, that's Donald Duck. Oh, no, it was awful. Yeah. And it, he, the worst is he didn't shave. So he had these, but he couldn't grow oh. a beard either. So he had these like weird, like, ah, like, like, just like grow hair. It was like a catfish whiskers coming out of his cheek. It oh. was just creepy. Oh, oh, it was, it was awful. I felt so horrible for the guy. I was like, can I at least get some like, sense? Like, oh. huh. It was no, it was terrible. Like, I don't know why they would put him out in a show like they did. You know, why I even had the rights to see him at that point. That How do you awful. do that? Why would you like yeah, no, put the bad. poor guy out in public like that? It's not terrible. But anyway, you don't you, you gotta have a list. You gotta have a list that's okay with your significant other yeah, you to do. know who they are. It's just open. We just walk through and go. Would you? Do, does that person look? Yeah. Oh, okay. so it's okay. interchangeable. Like yeah. they can. That's yeah. Cool. Why not? Well, it's it's fluid, never going to happen. So why fucking not? Moody's is all I mean, Asian, starting with why, why, why lock it down when you know none of them are going to happen? That's so true. Just well, enjoy Kilmer the fantasy. Like, like I'm telling you, George. Yeah, Val Kilmer probably could have happened. No, but if George, <laughs> if George Clooney comes to my house, I'm just going to let him in. I'm going to be like, dude, hey, she's upstairs. Have at it. Yeah, I think I'll put George Clooney's too. wife on my list. Would you? Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh, she's, yeah. yeah. she's got kids. just to piss she's, off George. She's used goods, bro. She's got children. She had children. So I'm just kidding. Wow, just what did we go? Elvis. Elvis had a with Priscilla. Do you know that? Elvis. Elvis what? Yeah, once Priscilla had a kid, he was like, "Nope, she damaged goods. I'm out." What? Oh, really? Yes. I never heard that shit. Elvis had many a guma, as they say in the mafia world. And um, she once Priscilla had a kid, done. Wow. Yeah. Once he had Lisa Marie? Yeah. Yeah. That was all this is day. What an unfortunate thing. Well, I mean, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I'm going to start. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that. Mm, there you go. Wow. Yeah, Elvis. Not a good guy. Gemma Chan can have a child. I'd still be. Yeah. You what would, up? Yeah. Gemma Chan could be like could have like run a marathon and you still would have been like hey, yeah Candice Wu they all you know Randy Who, Chung who's the first one by the way we uh, Gemma Chan we who's that she's um Gemma Chan from um, Crazy Gemma. Rich Asians yeah. um she's she played like oh, the sister. Okay. sister yeah the sister okay but um the funny thing. We had we interviewed a guy who's my brother's best friend, but he manages adult film stars. Yes, and he basically books featured dancers in all the clubs in like in this country, but around the world. He mentioned some random Cindy Starfall. He mentioned some Asian lady. He's like, "Do you know who this is?" And Mooney's like, "I know her, and I've seen all her videos." And like, Mooney, yeah, no, he, he, he mentioned had. Cindy Starfall. I don't know if you know that is, but I was like. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> so we don't know who she is, but we're googling right now. Yeah, we're trying yeah, to get Cindy, Cindy Starfall. Cindy Very Starfall cute. on our show at some point. We were going to get it, but then we our were, producer was like, producer "Nope." Buzz killed us. Yeah, yeah. We could have had her. I easily we could have had her interview for the show, and See, then I would have made my move. The problem is, folks, we actually do a clean show, and it would go kind of yeah, against we do. our show. If so, we you had. can't you can't interview an adult actress because it goes against your show. Well, we we can, but um, it the it, content may the get content may get a little bit suspect. And, pornographic? Um, yeah, we'd have to interview her on your show. Yeah, so I'm okay. a, yeah, I approve. Let's we'll do it on your show, and we'll all talk to her. Knocked pornographic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, our our producer was like, <laughs> shut up. That's you know, funny. Well, I got a job to protect. <laughs> so uh, yeah, literally, we couldn't. I was all as yeah. you said. If we interviewed her, we'd have to be like. Hey guys, can we borrow? <laughs> yeah, we were we were all gone home. Can we was... borrow your Zencaster? <laughs> does does being clean help your audience retention yeah, or know. attraction or anything? I think it. 
I so fuck does. that. What the fuck are you doing? Well, the no, same thing is we also I, don't, I, don't, I want to curse for the well, record. I'm totally for, kidding. I'm for totally the same kidding. reason we also don't talk politics because, you know, at, at some point we don't want to turn off anybody. We don't want to do any of that in case for some god awful reason we get a call that says, hey, can you fill into this morning spot on terrestrial radio? I don't want to have to go. We have to completely change our whole format around because of it. So it's kind of like we're starting off clean so we don't have to make any changes and sell anything out along the way. Maybe one yeah, of these totally days right. we'll realize we're not going to be terrestrial stars and you'll yeah. But I, mean, I think there's honestly, I think there's something funnier about like in our show, it's not like we don't talk about sex or anything like that, but talk you about know, sex, baby. we've had to, we've had to dance around it. And I think that, yeah, it's like the innuendo and stuff. Yeah. I think around, the innuendo yeah. is funnier than the actual just saying it. So yeah, I, I totally think, get that. Yeah. So, um, I forgot we were we were talking but about it's liberating the curse in your show. It's we liberating. were talking about steak and a BJ day, I think, at one point, which is actually coming up. No, we missed it. It was March. I think it, I think it was yeah. uh, February, yeah, March, March, yeah. March fourteenth. Yeah. And so um, we were talking about that, and I think we were calling it a Bo Jackson or something like yeah, that Bo the Jack, whole time. Yeah. And so you know, it, it, I don't know, it's clean, like clean, but you can still get away with saying what you want to say. I like it yeah. for real. I'm a cursor. So yes, Mooney has used profanity. So folks, if you're starting, if you're going to listen to our show for the very first time, um, there are a few shows where Mooney has missed the mark, and you know, very few, I don't know maybe like edit, four so, curses total. Yeah, I don't know how to edit, and we're too lazy to start the show over. So they're there somewhere. They're gems when you find them. Just I think in the <laughs> drinking show. I think the drinking show. They're little Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Iron Man at the like eating whatever at the end of the. Uh, yeah. Nothing like doing an awesome show, knowing that you can't edit, and then towards the end, when he drops the f bomb. Well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you just look at the clock and then write that number down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it, well, that's the thing is, I, like I said, I don't really. I'm too lazy to edit. Like you can go in and look at all the little lines and try to cut it, but even when you edit it, just looks, it sounds bad. At least when I edit, it sounds bad. So we're too lazy. Mark's the expert. You do it right the first time, Moody. Yeah, I can't. Just sometimes the cursing just comes out. It just, you know, it has to. It just, it... Oh, that's another thing. So we can use profanity on your show, and I'll do it on this one. So Moody says something that I think is so outlandish, but he thinks it's a normal thing to say. But he says, mother bitch. Do you yeah. mother bitch? Yeah. Have you ever heard anybody say mother bitch and think that's normal? I say mother bitch face. Do you really? Yeah. See, and I know I'm not normal. See, he says mother bitch all the time. And it, and mother bitch he, face. I'm, I'm like, no one says that. Mother bitch face might sound better. Why I've is never mother said bitch either. face sound better? I don't get it. It, it. it might sound better. I think it sounds Mother bitch better. face. Because the word face? <laughs> yeah. Mother bitch. Mother bitch face. Mother bitch I, is It approved. kind of got a little bit of a ring to it. Mother bitch face. Mother bitch face? It's like Mother it Love Bone, like but totally Bone different. Jam album. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mother Love Bone. Yeah, their new album, Mother Bitch Face, coming out next <laughs> Isn't week. Isn't that your nickname back in college? I know, my nickname back in high school. <laughs> that, what was it last week? It was Rumble, Rumble Strips. Rumble Strips. <laughs> and then he said, like, you know that. I get it. Kick. Matt does this bit where he does No, I, I didn't even create it. It's Everybody knows it. But we, where you say something weird and you're like, oh, that was my nickname back in high school. Mooney laughs every, every time. single time. Finger cuffs. <laughs> exactly. So, so he was talking about that's exactly what uh, I fucking chased the Amy. Love that movie. So, so Mooney <laughs> mentioned um, Rumble Strips. <laughs> and I'm like, that was my nickname back in high school. And he's like dying laughing for like five minutes. <laughs> yes. I don't know. It just gives me <laughs> every single time. And you know the joke is coming at this point. And it's just, I don't care. I can hear it every time. I don't care. It makes me laugh. That's it's like awesome. watching a it's like watching a comedy, right? You turn on like yeah. Caddyshack, you laugh at like you know, right in the lumber yard. You laugh every time. You know what's coming. Yeah. Totally. We've started using the terms gaggle of cunts and fuckwits. Gaggle because they're very British cunts. strong terms. Yeah. And they work cunts great. And it's very offensive. I, well, I it's know. it's very British. It's very British because <laughs> they throw that C word around like it's fucking candy. They do Are not you kidding? Get, it, no. it means nothing to them. We like, inter- we interviewed bloody to we, them is like so offensive. We interviewed Tony from the UK and he said gaggle of cunts within the first five minutes. That's all awesome. gaggle of cunts. Well, that's like, like Jim Jeffries yeah. is one of my favorite comedians. I know he's Australian, but 
he uses he C-O-R-D. does a lot I, oh yeah like his, it just naturally but they don't use it. that word here at all it's like no. super offensive Jeez. i know it's a crazy you know, thing like the british people say twat i love that they don't say twat they say no, twat twat Makes me laugh every time. They say bollocks what? instead of balls. I mean, what did they say? Um, gaggle of cunts, and then what was the other one? Fuckwits. Fuckwits. And I'm gonna go Fuck clean. Wits. When they say aluminum, it makes me laugh too. Fuckwits. Yes. Like it, yeah. aluminium. Yes. Can you, use, can you use fuckwits in a sentence? Like, is it that person? <laughs> can you give me? The you guys are a bunch of fuckwits. What do you want a spelling bee? <laughs> they didn't ask you to spell it. <laughs> Could you please use it in a sentence? Next on Jeopardy. <laughs> what is a fuck with? What is a fuck with? Are there there any other coming coming from early Greek mythology? Um, are there any other pronunciations? <laughs> What is a fuck with Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Next category. What is a fuck with? Potent potables for four hundred, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> awesome. What did he? What did he say? What? What? What does potent potables turn into? I have no right. fucking idea. It's some shit. It's one of those categories no, on Jeopardy. No it's like very, it's yeah, it's like a they random. They use it in the um in the in uh, Jeopardy. Oh, Jeopardy on Saturday Night Live, and then he says something no, else. It's the rapist. No, but he says something else for potent potables. Does it's, he? Uh, yeah. Um, I just I'm going to have to Google it. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll take the rapist for 200 <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Fucking great. You guys know that one, right? Oh, yeah. Sean, for Sean sure. Yeah. That's one. I think that's one of Woodsy's classic. Oh, well, you do the Scottish accent. Hello. <laughs> meet <laughs> Trebek. We finally meet. <laughs> Your mother. Oh, you're their mother, Trebek. Below. <laughs> See, we actually do need Ryan to look this stuff up. Do you guys have somebody that looks stuff up for you? Because I'm telling you, that's the greatest thing. We have Brian, our producer, literally just looks anything up while we're doing it while we're doing the show, so we can like see pictures of people and and anything we're talking about. He'll look up. That would be highly advantageous, but we don't have. We a need budget. a Brian. You need a Brian. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, we definitely yeah. want a Brian. We actually, you know what you guys do really, really well that I'm jealous of, and I actually told, I was yelling at Brian about it. As a matter of fact, we need a social media person because our social media, like we're on every, we're like on all the platforms, but it's like me trying to like, you know, hey, listen to our show. You yeah, know, it's just like, me doing it. Yeah, I know. You do a good job at it. Like I see you. I, you, I you hate it. I loathe it. I yeah, loathe. You're, you're good at like, here's a link to our show. Yeah, I feel handcuffed to that oh, fucking yeah, I, phone. Ugh. I don't see. I don't do anything. I ride your style. If you've noticed, I, I watch what you do, and then I, I like, love people. Yeah. I I love like some of the engagement's been awesome. A lot of there's a great community out there, and it's fun connecting with people. Yeah. But like as a whole, I hate have feeling that obligatory. It's the only way we'll get our name out there. Or anyone yeah. will get a chance is to put something out for people to maybe catch. Luckily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it's such a numbers like, game. I want to find like a college student or something that just is one with social media that can just do it, so I don't have to do it. And so I need I need an intern. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. an investment involved if you're looking to do that. You could probably go on Fiverr and find somebody yeah. to do that. Fiverr, what's that? Fiverr is like a website where you can just get somebody to write your copy for you or to do social media, get people added, like. It's a pretty interesting little thing. It's like little handiwork for social media type or digital type. Isn't that like every college fiber, student? Like ethno fiber, like oh, fiber, like F I V E R. Because basically, oh, yeah. it started with oh, he it started right with Hey, give me five wow. bucks. Give me five bucks, and I'll get you the an intro to to put up on to describe okay. your podcast or something. Uh, okay. See, like you no, know, I want to go to like a local college and just say, look, you know, you're interested in like, yeah, get an internship. Find the nerd. Yeah. Well, that's what I was trying to tell a million. Like we're legit enough that we can actually do it. Like I had internships at the TV station I worked at and they were kind of fake because it was, I was already working there, but um, we can get people to intern at our show. We absolutely can. I think we need it. That, that's going to be our thing for this year. Nice. So Hell Yeah. We- Definitely wish you luck on it. Before we call it a day, mm-hmm. is there anything you want to like plug? Tell us about your podcast. Give us a little snippet about what it's about. 
your uh, all your particulars, all your social media stuff, your website stuff. Oh and... yeah, oh, there um, you go. Bam. So, so <laughs> exactly. So um, yeah, basically the show is me poking the bear, um, aka Mooney. Absolutely. Um, and so. It, and then I react, and then I do my little dance, and yeah, and, and once again, Mooney does no show prep whatsoever. So he t- he literally just rolls in, sits down, and I hit record. He has no idea the topic because I'm a right. reaction master. That's what it is. So there's he has no concept of what topics we're going to cover, and so his his reaction is as natural as it's right. Natural. I'm like the John Wick of like podcast reactions. Like that's wow. what I do. <laughs> so random. <Whoa. laughs> and so um, yeah, so basically we're on every platform, all the majors. Um, I think we're having a little issue with Deezer at the moment. Yeah, so like. I don't know, for some reason, down. they, like, you know, they want I'm money. I'm a big fan of the sub facts. But, um, but we're on all the major platforms, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. Um, all, the, all the ones you guys, what you are you guys know. Spotify. Uh, Amazon Echo, Spotify. Yeah. And so, you know, basically, we talk anything, you know, pop culture, you know, some sports, but music, TV. A movies, lot of music. A lot of movies. A lot of food. There's a lot, a lot of, food of food involved. And so... Um, yeah, it's but it's fun. Much. We do interesting topics, you know, like like we were saying before, like we recast movies. Uh, we'll talk about like uh, best picnic foods, or we'll t- you know do our reactions to certain news events. Um, like like we were talking about before, like fighting a cheetah, like Matt thinks he can fight a cheetah because yes. a dog got attacked by a cheetah. So we like we act to what's going on in the world, but and we, don't we just try to politics. make no po- no politics, and we just try to make fun of it. Yeah, so we wasn't some to... woman just recently attacked by like a cub, like a mountain lion or something, or a bobcat, and the husband like grabbed it to see and that, like that threw happened. it? That's I think that point. like it literally was happen. like this past week. Yeah, it did happen. I did. I haven't. I just bob... heard about it. I saw a bobcat running in between like a car. Like in other words, it chased the kid, and then it. I think it went after the mom. So I've been watching. A, I've been watching that show alone a lot, where which is basically like Survivor, but a little bit more hardcore. And it's these people that are just, you know, in the wilderness by themselves with jungle cats and all kinds of stuff around them. Those things want nothing to do with humans. But, like, if you do come up on them, I'm pretty sure you can punch them in the face. <laughs> and, it, and that's what I'm it's saying. Like we, yeah. And that's what we like. And we'll talk about any, like, you can literally, <laughs> like, write in with a topic and we'll do it. Yeah. Like, no problem. Like, I bet you guys can't talk about, like, this. Absolutely we can. Yeah, because because of the fact that everything we say is technically a sub fact, it's our truth, and um, anything else is stupid. You know, we'll pretty much give a answer to anything, even if we don't have any. Uh, even if we don't have any legitimacy or training in the subject. Yeah, exactly. So um, right. you can throw out any question. We are going to give an answer, right or wrong. What's well, going to be right? But it's the Probably half right. Yeah, and by the way, we send a, we do a lot of things where we create movies that would be perfect movies and cast them. Oh my God, that and, would, we are Hollywood, really good at that. Hollywood is missing the mark on us. Like they should get us to cast pretty much every one of their movies. Like Mark and Woodsy, if you know anybody in Hollywood, like literally send them our way. We can cast any movie anytime. Like Seth MacFarlane. I did, but Harvey Weinstein's no longer in his position. So <laughs> by, the, by the way, I am so pissed at Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I don't care about the whole sexual stuff that he did, but the fact that I can't get dogma uh, uh, on like any streaming service is all his fault. I hate him for that reason. Buy it on physical DVD like I have it. Well, no, because I have it. <laughs> so I do everything through <laughs> iTunes. So I've got like all of my whole, like I've got 500 movies on iTunes and I want it to be, you know, I have the DVD, but I want it to be in the same category, the same section. Can't you, there are iTunes, aren't there like adapters where you, rip the dvd onto you like can, but uh, it doesn't four. it doesn't go into the same um like on my like like i'm i've got apple everything so it's like that gotcha. the tvs and whatnot it doesn't go in like i have a, <laughs> a media server too that i could have you know dumped it on but it's like me having to click from one app to another app to get to it it just annoys me 
So it's Mooney, it's, please tell me that you judge him for that. It tweets I do. It tweets I don't judge him for everything. everything. He won't eat chicken wings because he hates the bone. It's true. It's he, true. he literally is. No, 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 I, no. He, he has eater. apple everything. <laughs> is that not? That's that's the problem. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Like what's wrong with apple? Matter. I like apple. That's my that's my jam. Uh, like Samsung phone is basically only good for taking photos. That's about it. <laughs> so so my so I'm very OCD. So that's where for me it's. I want well, everything copacetic in, in its rightful place. You just bought a smart lock recently, folks, and the smart lock does not work. No, the smart lock is awesome. You just don't know how to work it. You tried working it, it didn't work. No, it was different. It was <laughs> ah, awesome. No, actually, my whole house is like smartified. So I smartified. Try to keep it that way. But um, no, just, just like I our show, was, that's what we're gonna new name our, our show. Like, smartified. I don't, I don't care about anything Weinstein does except for the fact that he's ruined dogma. And we can't get uh, Cannibal Run on any sort of iTunes. I don't think that's his fault. It almost catches as a joke. It's almost <laughs> funny. <Yeah. laughs> Except for that it's like diabolically evil. <laughs> it's like so literally. Uh, it's crazy. You guys yeah. record every Saturday, right? Um, no, we actually, um, we different did time, try different to, time. but like with the weather being nicer and stuff like that, we've been recording a lot of like Thursday nights and um, stuff like that. But um, we, we put the show out every Saturday. Uh, one so one show a week. Yep. Cool. And it's typically about. It used to be about two and a half hours long, and now yeah, now it's, it's an hour and a half. Now it's about an hour and a half. You know, um, we shortened it. Yeah, my wife listens, and she's like, "Look, I can only take you for so much." And, and I'm like, "Well, hopefully, people can listen to us longer." But anyway, yeah, we shortened it. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, cool. But yeah. Wait a minute. If I were your wife and I didn't want you as much, I'd want you on the podcast longer, so I'd have me time more. I'll be honest See? with you. The show puts wouldn't, her wouldn't you? She listens to my. Like, uh, that's how you're advertising us. Great. She said there's something soothing about my voice. I don't know what it is, but it puts her to sleep. So like, I literally listen to us, folks. We'll put you to sleep. I I call in her. I go into her bedroom like later at night, and I hear me, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> and she's like. It just puts me to sleep. <laughs> wow. The good the good news is there are people on Twitter looking for podcast recommendations for like yeah, falling asleep. Yeah, or whatever that is. It's a huge right? niche. Yeah. Yeah, and they have like those A- ASMR. What? No, it's called ASMR, which is it, these like soothing videos and sounds oh, where sweet. people can go to sleep. So I want to do that. If you're like my wife, you could also listen to our show from that. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty was. interesting. So they do. And by the way, there's been anyway. some shows where she's like, Mooney's talking way too much. I can't get to sleep. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like intermittent yelling is kind of like yeah. shaking someone awake. I would yeah. think that, that would, that's how that would work. That should be the name of our show, Intermittent Yelling. <laughs> I thought it would just be Matt Pokes Mooney. That's what I would call it, MPM. <laughs> Actually, I call it MPMP, Matt Pokes, Mo- Matt Pokes Mooney Podcast. Just go <laughs> MPMP and you're good. <laughs> So I, I already see the logo and everything. It's all awesome. right, right here. Boom. Well, yeah, unfortunately, we already have the Suffix merch already. So yeah, we're going to have to change all the yeah. merch to yeah. MP. So, by the way, if you, if you guys No one was buying it anyway. Don't worry about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have throw pillows you can get. Hell yeah. What? Really? Those yeah, are you go beautiful. to suffixpodcast.com, you can not only see you know pictures of us and learn about us, but you can go to our merch section. And if you want a beach towel or throw pillows, you can. We, you know what? We, we should have, have a picture on throw pillows for those women out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, we just like the pillows. Jason Alexander sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dead sexy. You no, know it's sad. I can't fit into any of the actual shirts that we sell. <laughs> we have on our show, on our merch stuff. But That's awesome. I'm just kidding. I'm working my way into it. Working my way. Which uh, which merch? Which merchant do you use, and have you heard any feedback from everybody about the quality or everything? Um, we use Teespring, and um, it's it's like I've uh, picked up a couple things, and um, I've been fine with it. You know, they're your standard shirts. They're you know your standard cotton T-shirts. Yeah. We don't have we don't have the like the microfiber ones or the sport ones. And... Yeah, like the, the generic tees. They, but like I said, they do gators and stuff like that. They do a g- decent job on the logo. Nice. They wait. They have a poster, which are, are little stickers and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I, like, I want to see the person who buys the poster and yeah, has it up in there. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, and they'll they'll like hopefully get like you to autograph it because my autograph means nothing. But um, I would get their full information so you can fill out the restraining order properly. <laughs> well, we did have one. We did have one listener who was like, 
you know, ask, he was like kind of asking me like, how come I don't friend him on Facebook? And I was like, like, whoa, I was like, dude, I don't really know you, you know, but you know, I, I guess I can't, you know, I'm going to have the talk radio situation. Talk I love how you have a stalker. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever want a stalker. I would be so good for my stalker. I'm so I flattered. In front of my window, all that stuff. You would? I would be it's so everywhere. fucking flattered. I mean, how, how flattering. Like, for a woman to have a stalker, it's dangerous. For a man to have a stalker, that's fucking, Im- that's admirable. I that's so sweet. Thank you for stalking is, me. Uh, yeah, that is the most, that is probably, for a woman to go out of her way to be outside my well, bush. A man is yeah. stalking him. It's a man. That it is a man right. in this case, and that's kind of weird. But that's what I was saying. Like, I, if a woman stalked yeah. me, I'd be all about it. No, but yeah. if she stalked me, I'd be like, "Hey, look at ten o'clock. Just go outside. My, I'll do a dance in front of my window if you need. It's all good." <laughs> I want to know that somebody's watching me from the outside. I want to know that yeah, I'll somebody's do that. watching you know, me. I'll have a thing. We'll do a pillow fight and stuff in front of the window. Who sings that? What is that? Rockwell. Okay, Rockwell. I don't think it's on. Rockwell Barry with Gordy. Michael Jackson singing that yeah, part. Barry, the reason he got Michael Jackson because he's Barry Gordy's um, son, I believe. Whoa! Yeah, it's like yeah. I think there's a Quincy Jones I connection believe too. We came back to Michael Jackson. That's how we started with these guys. We did on our show. Remember, they were talking oh, about yeah. the, um, the, the Finding Neverland. Oh, see, oh. Uh, Matt never knows what we talk about. He blames me for no you show. Guys do that too. Like, like I know exactly what we talk about on every show. Matt does it. At the end of our show, I have no idea what we just spoke about. about. I do. And I do no show prep. I forget a lot of things that I say, but I play it back one time when I like, Mm -hmm. when we release it, I listen to it once and I go, holy shit, I can't believe I said that. Oh, I I said that that too. I do it for more like sound quality because I don't edit or anything. So it's kind of like, did it somehow work? You know, that's kind of what I do. But for the most part, I have no idea what we talk about. Which is good because I don't remember, so I'm listening back to it as a brand new listener. And, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, hey, if I was driving in my car, would I listen to this? And it's like, hey, why not? 51st podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's so many subtle jokes that Mooney puts out there that I don't pay attention to when we're actually doing it. But then when I listen back to it, I'm like, oh, that's funny. What do you got, Mooney? Yeah. Like I just did, 51st podcast. You nope, know didn't even pay attention to 51st dates, about. Adam Sandler, you know. Hello. Yeah. 51st dates. Yeah. How do you not know? That's a great movie. Duh. I, I was too busy talking. That's weird. Get your brother it's, at the dishwasher. He can beat up a cheetah. I'm convinced of it at this point. No fucking way. Thank you. you. Beat up a cheetah? I mean, definitely no, not out race. You beat up like, a cheetah? That's... How many animals? Yeah, there? he was talking about like literally fisticuffs with a cheetah. No animal has ever been punched in the face. Except it's for like, a shark. I mean, well, a shark, yes. And you, that's how you beat a shark. But what I'm saying is. No, no, no. That's how you fend off okay, a shark. With our opposable thumbs, we can poke their eyeballs out. Like, literally, like, I'm not saying you're not going to get hurt. The guy thinks he's freaking John Wick over here. I'm not saying you're not going to get hurt. Mark, Mark we can go now. But you're going to win. <clears throat> I'm keeping this in. Death by cheetah. <laughs> this, is stay, this is staying in. I, I, I want to listen to this cheetah argument. <laughs> oh, that, welcome to our show. <laughs> exactly. We were talking about the different animals, and I'm like, as long as it's not bigger than you, like a bear can like stand on its hind legs, and it's going to be bigger than you. Have it's you fun. seen Revenant? There was a raping. Yes, I have. <laughs> so, no, what I'm saying bear is, there's a bear rape. Leonardo what? got bear rape, uh, bro. Uh, I've seen the movie Gray, and wolves take out like, like eight see, people, this, and, he, and Matt wolf. thinks he can take out a wolf. You can take out anything, like a coyote or a wolf. What if the dog? Well, if you have like a begging strip, then you could totally beat the wolf. Yeah, or you just kick them. <laughs> You're like they're they're on their all fours. They're never going to be. Are you thinking a mountain lion too? Yes. You, you do you know that every single canine species. Came, it came, came out of the wolf, right? Yeah. Everyone is a wolf. So, you can, yeah, you can take out a wolf. Including the mighty Chihuahua. The bacon. <laughs> what's the, what's the crazy point. train? What's the, the gravy train commercial? Gravy tra- Oh, gosh. With the little oh, the little trolley going through yeah, the kitchen? Yeah, the covered wagon? Train. Chuck wagon. Yeah, you add water. Chuck wagon, that's it. Oh, Chuck oh, wagon, yeah. gravy train. And then it, it made, like, you add water and it made that mush. It made But scut- they called it, it gravy. Made br- Exactly. But, um, right. but I'm convinced of it. As long as it's not like, like I can't take a hippo. I can't take an elephant. But you, you take on something that's like smaller, easily. You punch them in the face. They've never been punched in the face. I guarantee you. All right. I yeah, You know I don't believe you, and you know you're wrong. That's why most animals don't want to touch humans. They don't want to go near them. Oh, really? Yeah, because dogs don't attack humans ever. It's probably because we have guns, dude. 
Well, so, I know. But uh, dogs attack humans a lot. But even so, before so this dogs, just in, Matt can beat up a cheetah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Film at 11? Like, what we <laughs> yeah, no, 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 fried movie thing cheetah. here? Well, I had a whole dream. I had a whole dream where I was, I watched a video on Facebook where the dog got taken out by a cheetah. So I spent the whole night thinking about how I would beat up a cheetah and other various animals. It, and so, yeah, I'm taking on a cheetah. You don't like to fight. I'm, I'm not you saying don't I, even fight. I don't think I've ever seen you in a fight or ever heard of you I'm in a fight. I'm not saying that I would start it. I'm just saying that if I had to finish it, I'd He would it. take the cheetah to dinner first. Oh, really? Yeah. What are you going to do? Do you have this master zen power where you're just going to no. dip into your like inner panda like, and you're just going to start beating people it's up? It's fight or flight, dude. I'm like poking eyeballs out. It's never had its eyeballs poked out. You can get yeah. your hands on it. By the way, you poke its eyeball ball out, it stops. It's got lightning quick. Speed. It's going to be attacking me. so It's, it's not just a big pussy, dude. Me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm poking eyeballs out. That's yeah, and then you're going to get ripped to pieces. And then I'm going to be using you in the hospital as half your neck is ripped off. No. Yeah. That's a fair point. Or at least <laughs> half the neck, yeah. Maybe a third. <laughs> I, I would lose a limb. I'd lose a limb, but I would win the fight. That's, that's what I'm saying. Did you previously have this conversation? Or yes, we did. did. We, this is a totally yeah. different argument. Actually, we, we did have this on our show. And so by the way, his brother doesn't think he can win either, so he's off. He's off in space. Okay. Hey, Bob's money's going to come out, and you're going to slam a basketball. I mean, so it's, you just wait and die if a cheetah comes up at you. I'm going to try, but I know I'm not going to win. You guys are so cute. Punch it in the face. And I thought we needed the couch. Right. therapy. Do you sit? Do you sit next to each other in therapy, or that's do you awesome? Caddy corner. Oh, one in a chair, one on the. No, show. no, we're like we are like uh, melty. We're like what's his name? Uh, it's but, not uh, Mooney. It's uh, me. <laughs> we're like Bill and Ted in the in the latest one where we're on the couch. Oh yeah. No. You saw that one, right? Yeah, of course. It was okay. So I couldn't. Like, I couldn't get behind it. It was okay. Now, from cheetahs to movie reviews. But it was cool that they had death. I was like, that was rad. Yeah. Death, death came cool. back? Death came back. And it was uh, it was Green Goblin? Or no, the other it was uh, William... Defoe. No. Yeah, it's William Defoe. No, yeah. it's not William Defoe. No, 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 it's, 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 no, it's the other guy. Looks, it's the other guy that looks, that looks like him. just like but him. And yes. sounds just like him. Right. It's a low-budget William Defoe. Correct. It's a low-budget William Defoe. It's a William Defoe, F-A-U-X. Correct. Boom. Boom. There's no low budget William Defoe. That's, that's how, yeah, there is a Willem Defoe look alike. Low budget anybody, really. He's in well, the Tom Clancy. Gary Busey is low budget Nick Nolte, right? I mean. True. No. More like treasure Busey's protector. Busey's better than Nolte. <laughs> Busey's better than Nolte? Oh, I love Busey. Busey can do no. Did you hit record yet? Yeah, I think we are hitting record. Yeah, this whole oh, thing. Are you really? this like, been, yeah, this has been recorded for our quality control service. Don't worry, we're going. Keep going. So we're, going. we're adding this on the end anyway. We'll just cut and add it on the end. Oh, okay. I love it. Ooh, look at so you since we're talking about skills. Willem Dafoe lookalikes or whatever, who, who is Nick skills. Nolte? Nick Nolte and um, Gary Busey are similar to me. Oh, hey, oh God. Be- oh. Before I forget, I had a very important question that was related to me. So we can come back to oh. this, but oh, blank there is. William is the- Sadler. There you go, William Sadler. That's who it is. Okay, William so Sadler, yeah. Dude, Die Hard, right? I yeah. think. Willem Star and two. William. Yes. Die Hard too. Yes. yes, correct. Correct. Okay, so, so Woodsy had something to say. Yeah, we'll come back to this if we can table it. But somebody asked me two days ago, "Blank is this generation's Iron Maiden?" And oh, my buddy yeah. goes, my buddy's about 41, 42, and he said Avenge Sevenfold. And I no wanted to, f- uh, no shit. Ah! And I Are said, I even know that's not true. I said Avenge Sevenfold is like the Backstreet Boys of metal. Okay. Oh, There's so, such weak sauce on that. Like, I know. So then I said, well, you know, Nickelback is definitely the air supply of this generation. <laughs> and then true. I, so you guys can answer that question because I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Who's the Iron Maiden of this generation? You know what's sad? I don't think they're like is Volby there even close or that Oh fuck Volby. <laughs> Hold on. The we have to tell the story Mooney's about fuck Volby. Oh, I, don't, I don't know anything. I'm only guessing. Mooney's only no. reference to anything like metal is Volby. Fuck he Volby. That's like he thinks Volby is like the heaviest of the heavy. But they're so not very heavy though. though. It's not even close. So, so who, like what about so Woodsy? Woodsy heavier than them. Woodsy you know. the owl on Twitter. Yes. His previous Twitter handle, and we changed it for the show's sake, was at fuck Volbeat. Wow, you know, for like Volbeat? three weeks, I was at fuck Volbeat. 
What did Volby do to you? I saw saw them at a a festival. They opened for Five Finger Death Punch, and Hell Yeah played before them. So I didn't really know anything about them. I knew that the guitar player from Anthrax left and joined Volby, which I thought, what are you doing? Anthrax is fucking amazing. So then they get up there, and the music is really good, but the singing, it sounds like a weird... like like you want type of thing. It's like a weird, you want to do like an Irish dance or something. It's very, the voice you know, Irish, is they, really they, fucked up. They play a bow beat song before the Flyers games. and it's. it's I'm so I, sorry. I get so pumped up. No. I really love it. No. Yeah, they do it before the Coyotes games too. Oh, oh yeah. Like they're just, don't get me wrong. I, mean, not, I, I need a good they are, they're they're lady song. Yeah, they're they're commercial. I'm not, I'm not they're dying basic. on the hill for bow beat, but. You they're know. manufactured. They're, you know, they're what. What they're what the average person will listen to. There's a, it's kind of yeah. like the Overton window of music. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think you no know, one one band, and they're not. Trust me, I'm not saying this is the Iron Maiden because I don't know who the Iron Maiden of today is. But the band that I like that's more of the younger band is the Struts. Love them. They're the like Struts. They're, yeah, but they're more of like a, they're more of if anything more of like I'd say like a, the Guns and Roses of now. You well, know? Why would you mention the Struts? I'm just saying, I can't think of an Iron Maiden. Exactly. It's a really tough an question. Iron and Maiden analogy, and you come up with the, the I'm, struts. I'm throwing out the struts because I'm. A- as a German who knows nothing about metal, Ramstein. That's Thank what you. I said. I, after about four hours, I said yeah, Ramstein. Too old though. Wait, but I but they still sell out stadiums. You know, they're all and they like, still are producing music. And they had their, and their last album. Their pyro. Their last album was fucking two years ago. Was is fucking super good, and I said Ramstein because. Romstein and Iron Maiden, zero radio airplay. Romstein and Iron Maiden still sell out stadiums now. Amazing mm-hmm. stage shows, right? That's why oh, yeah. I said that. Because there's really no – the question's fucked up because they're really – So there Iron is no, there's is, Iron Maiden. Du Haas, though, did make it huge yes. commercially yeah. because Duhas. they turned it like in almost an electronica. They made it like a yeah. dance. They, it became huge in that realm. Too, yeah, right? and they did – they were in that stupid movie with – the, the first triple X movie. Yeah. The, the only thing with Ron yeah, uh, all the um, rage against the machine music that was remixed on it too. I like, I like Romstein, but the only thing about it is like the German language just kind of like, it's not scary. Like it's not scary, but it's, kinda, it's guttural. I go right into like Nazis talk, you know, yeah. not like, I go right into like, you know, 1943. Hey Mark, um, why don't you say something in German? <laughs> Warum, warum hast du ein Problem mit den Deutschen? Du <laughs> Amerikaner <laughs> kannst nicht verstehen, was wir sagen. Motherfucker is bilingual. I'm German. I'm a, I, I, so I'm is Mark. You don't know yeah. any German. My sister, the funny thing is my sister-in-law is from is Filipino, but she lived in Germany and she actually was a professional ice skater. So she skated in the Olympics for didn't Germany. Have, yeah, didn't she have dual uh, Yeah, she has dual citizenship. citizenship. And she, um, like, she listens to yeah, Ramstein and knows exactly what she they're said saying. She would live in Germany over the U.S. That yeah, I, I'm an idiot, and I actually Googled the lyrics mm-hmm. to a Ramstein song at work. That was really, 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 really bad idea. Yeah, not, <laughs> not a good number. And idea. then I Googled, I, I Googled another one, and it was, uh, I don't know what the, I can't, I don't know what it's called, but uh, the song says, You Smell So Good. That's the name of the fucking yeah. song. That's my favorite yeah. Ramstein song. All right. All right, hold that's on, a, Chris. That's I have, the scary thing uh, about them, though. Before, oh, before we can stop, time out, time. Before we continue, okay. sir, there, there's this thing on the internet yeah. called on the Googles, yeah, called the Anarchist Cookbook. Okay, please do not do that at work. Okay, do not look that one up at work. Thank you. Just yes. thank you. Okay, no, continue. No, Duly no, noted. <laughs> the Anarchist Cookbook. And you guys course, haven't heard of that thing? It like shows, shows that. you how to make bombs and stuff. Oh shit, for real? Yeah, yeah. it's Steve literally called the I. I thought everyone knew. I'm sorry. Did you My see the apology. documentary on or the Ted Kaczynski on... manifest? That's the other one. Oh, okay. Let's see. Did you see the documentary on HBO the, on QAnon about the various websites, 4chan and 8chan and all that stuff? No. Enlighten oh, me. Addicted. It's the it's it's such a train wreck of a documentary. It's like it's more like Tiger King than anything, which is <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> so, so basically, did they reckon? Do what? Did they reckon to reckon? Like, yeah, they reckon. It, 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 it's crazy. So, like, the various, like, most people either, like, politically right or left are like, I don't want to go watch that documentary because I don't, they don't really care at this point. But um, when you, the documentary is basically this guy trying to figure out who Q is for the whole QAnon folks out there. 
And so you trace it back to the, the basically the website that's posting all these Q, you know, postings. And the people who own the website, it's just straight Tiger King. It's the greatest. Like there, there's there's a little dude with an affliction that like created the website that we have to deal with him. Plus we have to deal with the father. Zuckerberg? The father the ah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nuts. It, it's so fun. It's it's great. Though. Why do you have a We're getting advertised on a show and you're going to talk about how warped you are of an individual okay. that you love these Moon, sick, Moon, demented people. Mooney doesn't like oddities, apparently. I don't, I don't mind oddities, but you like, like, strange land people. I, I do. do. I love a good... Yeah. No, 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 no. You not like a head case. You love a bug head case. You like completely off the map about to shoot up a giant people. That's what you like. Wow. That's why you, why like. are you so loud? I know, right? Because he gets these like I, he, he doesn't the like TV my shows he watches. Like I watch like a thousand pound sisters and oh, uh, oh god. Yes. I love it. I love and it. And his QAnon, like he loves, he's like, oh, you should have heard what I like saw a documentary about. Some people that eat cats in India. And mm, delicious. Like, you know, hey, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> Dude, there's a... There... I know what they don't eat in India. It's cheetah. You know why? Because they can't <laughs> fucking kill it. <laughs> or cows. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I need to go over to India and show them how it's done. That's yeah, a right. callback, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See, now that is the same way. Oh, see, that, that's why they're as good as they are. <laughs> that's the one thing that pains us on our show is we cannot segue like from topic to topic without it's just terrible. We don't have a great segue out. To, to be fair, I don't want to know what our topics are. But I may be able Mooney to segue. There's no show prep whatsoever. It's better that way because like I they're like for three episodes in a row I was like completely checked out and it's because I knew everything we were gonna talk about. Like at one show we were talking about like going to hell, and then like we were going to segue into Mooney's mom, and I'm like, you know who's not going to hell at this point? That's <laughs> good. You know. Speaking so, of bears, did you hear about air traffic control today? <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly yeah, what we do. It's, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's, we're we're um, Tangentville for sure. Yeah, well, the thing is, we've tried a couple shows where we just went on tangent after tangent, and people were like, "Yep." I have no idea what you guys are talking about. And so we kind of need to keep it a little bit under control, which is fortunately why we have Brian who yells at us. Yeah, he keeps us he keeps us in line. It's That's a good lesson learned for sure. <laughs> do you guys have uh, any do you guys have anything further you want to plug on your show? No. Um no, really. Um we want to thank you. Yeah, I mean, we had an excellent you. time, man. We was uh it was awesome. Yeah, yeah well, I dig you guys are cool. We I dig you guys a lot. Yeah, we have fun well, time. Well, thank you. Yeah, and then I do think that um, Woodsy and I need to have like a metal show at some point. And I yes, do, we need to we need to have like. And your pain is my pain, Woodsy and Mark. So if you ever anybody you know like the <laughs> sentimental side of you ever wants, yeah. <laughs> if you, if you want to have a bare naked ladies <laughs> podcast, I can talk in. there you go. So, um, bare naked so ladies, rock spectacle is my favorite album of all time. Bam. I the Soul Brothers, movie. right there. Uh, yeah, no, I, I like the Bare Naked Ladies too, but that's Mooney's. That's as aggressive as he gets. That's yeah. yeah. That and Billy Joel pressure is about the yeah. <laughs> wow, that is very heavy. Yeah, yeah. My grandma. Uh, I mean, Brandy. Her, she's yeah. a fine girl, and you're like, wow, that is risque. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty much. That's pretty much how he gets. Yep. But, um, well, ge- well, gentlemen, once again, thank you so much yeah. for the time, man. Appreciate we had it. a great time. We had a lot no, of fun. Thank you. No, thank you. Awesome. And we'll definitely have to get you guys back on our show, too. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. We'll yep. have to do that. Absolutely. Cool. Well, anyway, well, can we'll... you do it in British accent, Mark? There? I can do pretty much any accent you guys want. So. Do Scottish. I like, well, he Scottish. did Scottish before. I like it. I like the Scottish. Scottish. I, I love you. I always have a... I always will. The Russian's the best. Though. Russia like water. The Czechoslovakian's the best. My Czechoslovakian. Oh, my Czech. I for two looking for this place. <laughs> you know, I like I, I like these Americans. These are good people. Weddy weddy. I like it. Weddy weddy. Weddy much. Weddy weddy. Nuclear used used vessel, Captain. I used to date a girl who was she was um, she was Yugoslavian, but she had the it was kind of a Russian accent, and she, she literally left me with, "You're not so bad for a fat guy." <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. Wow. Coitus. Thank you, and yes. you're welcome. And I'm sorry. I, I have fucked many of that guy in my country. This is amazing. This is not. This is not not as horrible as experience as in my old country with all fat, sweaty men. Look, you're, bringing, you're bringing me back. That was the exact memory. Wow. <laughs> do you know why the Do you guys know why the Yugo was built with a with the rear window defroster? No, no. It was to keep your hands warm while you're pushing it. <laughs> once again awesome. thank you guys very yeah, much thanks again yeah, really appreciate it, really appreciate it. Thank you. hey once again this has been another beer googles double e double o double g thank you thanks everybody gentlemen ladies everyone else who's listening subscribe listen review rate all that good stuff we, download stars yeah, that, yeah comments perfect all that shit thanks so much guys thank you take care